Good. Yeah. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, uh, welcome to the uh, Pennington County Planning Commission meeting. Uh, today's date's December 21st, 2020, 2 o'clock. Recommendations from the Planning Commission on certain items on this agenda will be considered by the Board of Commissioners at the regular meeting on January 5th, 2021 at 10.30 a.m. The Planning Commission utilizes speaker request forms, which are available in the rear of the, the Commission chambers here during the meeting. Uh, they're back in the bookshelf as our agendas for the meeting. Um, with that, we'll go ahead and, and get the meeting started. Uh, roll call. I guess I would note that everyone appears to be here. It's the first for a, a while, I think, with Ron being here from the board. Mm -hmm. uh, first item on the agenda is approval of the December tw 7th, uh, 2020 minutes. Are there any changes, corrections, edits to the minutes, etc.? <laughs> Seeing none, hearing none, I would entertain a motion for approval. Move to accept. Motion for approval. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Further discussion on the item. Seeing none, hearing none. Anyone in the audience wish to speak on that? Noting no one in the audience uh, on that as well. Um, since we're all here and we're not on a Zoom meeting, we can do regular, yeah? All right. Um, all those in favor uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Second item on the agenda is approval of today's agenda. Today's uh, agenda consists of a consent calendar uh, agenda items three through six, um, followed by regular items seven through 13, followed by um, our normal uh, end of agenda items 14 through uh, 18. Are there any changes to today's agenda? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion for approval of today's agenda. So moved. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Seeing none. Hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. <clears throat> Motion carries. Start the consent agenda. Good morning, Commissioners. Brittany Molitor, Planning Director. The following items have been placed on the consent agenda for action to be taken on all items in accordance with staff's recommendation by a single vote. Any item may be removed from the consent agenda by any planning commissioner, staff member, or audience member for separate consideration. The findings of this planning commission are recommendations to the Pennington County Board of Commissioners who will make the final decision. Item number three is conditional use permit review CU 7104 for David Allard to review an existing mobile home park on the subject property in a general commercial district. And staff is recommending approval of the extension of conditional use permit CU 7104 with conditions. Item number four is conditional use permit review CU 1630 for Paul and Carol Neiman to review an accessory structure, a pole barn, prior to a primary structure in a general agriculture district. And staff is recommending approval of the extension of conditional use permit CU 1630 with conditions. Item number five is conditional use permit review CU 1632 for Lynn and Gloria Smith to review an existing single family residence to be used as a ranch hand residence in a general agriculture district. And staff is recommending approval of the extension of conditional use permit CU 1632 with conditions. And finally, item six is conditional use permit review CU 1842 for Keith and Sandra Lochner to allow for a home occupation in a suburban residential district. And staff is recommending approval of the extension of conditional use permit CU 1842 with conditions. Thank you. Are there any items that staff wishes to pull from the agenda? Yes, item number four. Okay. I had number four as well. Are there any items that the commission wishes to pull from the agenda? Mr. Chairman, I too would like number four. Removed no. for separate discussion. Or excuse me. I want number three for separate discussion. Okay. Number three, number four noted. Anybody in the audience? Um, the items uh, three, four, five, and six uh, typically would all get voted on at the same time. Items three and four have been pulled from the consent agenda and will be considered separately during the meeting, um, which leaves items five and six. Does anybody in the audience wish to speak on items five and six before the commission votes? 
Seeing none, hearing none. Move to approve five and six. Motion to approve second. consent items five and six was second by Mr. Coleman. Um, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Brings us to item three. Good morning. Did you yeah. have a specific Well, questions? item three, it just strikes me as if the owner is blatantly ignoring all of the requests for things that need to be done, and yet we keep allowing him to continue. Now, I, I note that you know, now, now he has six months. I mean, to me, I'd give him 30 days if he doesn't get these items done that have been requested time and time and time again, that he just be shut down. So I, I don't know what your thoughts are, but it, it appears as if he's not being very cooperative. Well, he did move some of the other structures onto another property. So now there's ordinance violations on other properties. Um, yes. So, um, huh. so for this property, he did do and obtain the building permits that we had requested um, for the structures that were out there. Um, we did work with the state's attorney's office and we did add um, conditions eight, nine, and 10 to address some of the concerns and issues that we had had um, on this request. Uh, so that's why we gave him the other six months to give them the opportunity to meet those conditions and continue to meet the conditions of this uh, conditional use permit. What about all of the issues with the floodplain that were discussed? He did get a floodplain development permit for the structures. He just has one that he has to get updated um, for a carport uh, for the floodplain development permit, but he did submit a floodplain development permit and building permits um, for several of those structures that we had requested earlier. And all the building permits he has now gotten? Yes, he has submitted it. He just needs a floodplain development permit for one of the carports. I see. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Uh, Dave Allard is uh, in my district, and we know that he's got a colorful history, but uh, I'm working with them, and planning and zoning is working with them, and and he has guaranteed us that he's going to take care of the issues at hand. So, just I want to uh, let folks know that his as his district commissioner that uh, we're working on it. Noted, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Brittany. Yes. And I thought I heard you fly by with this, but eight, nine, and ten are new because I didn't follow, go back to see what whether they were part of the original conditions. I knew one of them was new, but. Correct, eight, nine, and 10 are new conditions that address some of the concerns that we had in the past. And, and, and I agree with your office and, and the commission, they're good ones. They, they do cover the six months. I see it's reviewed in six months, so thank you. Mm -hmm. Further questions on item, agenda item number three? Or would you like to make a separate motion? I will move to approve. Motion for approval of item number three. Is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? I, I would like to have it amended to, to read that it be reviewed in three months. Is that, is that your motion? Yes. Is there a second to the substitute motion? Mr. Chair, go ahead. Uh, I believe <clears throat> Mr. Allard is uh, planning on spending most of this winter in New Zealand. So I think that's why we're going with the six months. Yeah, he typically leaves the area for the winter months. Point of order. I'll second it just so we can discuss. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, motion and second. Now we're on further discussion. I would think that the three months would be tough, having done a lot of construction and whatnot. And he's got some decisions to make here. You know, what he's going to do in regards to the existing conditional use permit, as well as the other violations that he's done on the other properties. And I could see where you would see the six months to give him some time after the sun comes out and things dry up. To, and, and that's the only reason I would say not the the 90 days or the three months, but I have no problem with the three months either. Go ahead, other than that. Further discussion? 
Anybody in the audience wish to speak on this item? Okay. Um, so the current motion on the floor is. There's an amendment. I'm sorry. The amendment that would be first. Yeah. Yeah. The the amended motion on the floor is that the conditional use permit be reviewed in three months or on a complete basis as is necessary by the Planning Commission and Board of Commissioners to verify all conditions of approval are being met. Is that clear? Okay, no further discussion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed, no? No. no. Okay, uh, so we have <coughs> five to one, six to, six to one. Uh, brings us back to the original motion, um, which includes all of the items one through 13, uh, with item 13 being six months instead of three months. Further discussion on this motion? Does anyone in the audience wish to speak on this motion? Hearing none, seeing none. Uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no? No. Motion carries. Brings us to item four. Cody Sack, Planning Department. Did you have a specific question? I do. Um, on item number four, in the analysis, it says the applicant will be given one year to apply for a building permit or conditional use permit. Uh, CU 1630 will automatically end. Then in the recommendation, it says that it be reviewed in two years. Yeah, that, that's why staff wanted to pull it. It should say one year. Okay, so note for everyone that item 10 in the recommendation is one year, not two years. Correct. Correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, was, were there other comments on item four? Anybody in the audience wish to speak on item number four? Hearing none, seeing none. Um, staff's recommendation is uh, that um, staff recommends approval of the, condi uh, the extension of conditional use permit CU 1630 with 10 conditions, noting the change on number 10. Is there a motion? So move. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Seeing none, hearing none, all those in favor signify, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Brings us to item seven. Good afternoon, Shutima Sabun Planning Department. Agenda item number seven is conditional use permit CU 2030. Uh, the applicants and landowners are Jay and Mary Smith. Um, today, Mr. Smith is in the audience if you have any question for him. Um, they are requesting a conditional use permit for, uh, to allow a single Y mobile home to be used as a single family resident on General Agriculture District. The property is 10 acres, zone General Agriculture District. It is vacant of any structure. It is ro located within Rapid City, one mile septic group. Uh, jurisdiction that is no spatial flood hazard area in the um, on the property. Uh, staff sent staff sent for uh, sent routing for comments. County Highway commented that an approach permit will need to be obtained for access onto two twenty uh, fifth Street. If an approach for 1335 to 25th Street is used. An access easement document will need to be created and recorded for this parcel. Staff spoke with uh, the applicant who indicated the, who indicating that he would take an access via 
an accent is meant, and he is aware that the access is, is meant document will be created and re recorded with uh, register of deeds. This will also be addressed as a condition of approval. Emergency services 911 requested that address be posted on the structure and at the approach in accordance with Pennington County Ordinance Number 20. Consideration for conditional use permit request. Criteria number one, the requested use is to allow a single Y mobile home to be used as a single family residence. It should not be detrimental uh, to or endanger the public health, safety, and general welfare. Criteria two, the requested use should not change the residential use of any surrounding property and thus should not have any long-term negative effects on the use and enjoyment of other properties in immediate uh, vicinity. Criteria three, the requested use should not affect the normal ordinary development or improvement of any surrounding property in the area. Criteria four, the access to the property will be provided via an approach of, of 225th Street. The subject property is located within Rapid City's one mile septic jurisdiction. There's no, um, no spatial flood hazard area is on the property. Criteria five, access is off of 225th Street. The requested use is for a single family resident. It should not significantly increase traffic congestion in the public streets. Criteria number six, the current zoning district is general agriculture, which allows a mobile home to be used as a single family resident upon each uh, insur insur I'm sorry, insurance of a building permit. However, the single one mobile home appears not to meet section 304. Therefore, an approved conditional use permit is required. Criteria number seven, the future land use of the subject property is rural uh, residential district. Its designation denotes area that have large lot residential development in natural area, agri agriculture areas, or surrounding open space areas. The allowed use are the use of fa single family, large, large lot residential, accessory, accessory secondary dwelling units, public and quasi public use, agriculture use, and storage. The requested use appear to be in harmony with the future land use. On December 11, 2020, um, the staff performed a site visit on the subject property and found that it is vacant of any structure. December 18, staff received a letter of concern from the, the applicant neighbor regarding Perry Dog problem. Staff forwarded the concern to County Natural Resources Director. He recommended that the Perry dogs get control before anything is done on the subject property so they do not move on to the neighbor's properties. Um, staff has spoke, uh, staff spoke with Mr. Smith today and he, he, you, uh, Yep, so he contact with uh, Scott Gaffey and Scott just emailed me back that he he is agree, like the plan that Mr. Smith has for the Perry Dog is suitable, it's appropriate. Um, staff recommends adding another condition uh, as that the applicant works with the County Natural Resources direct, Director to control the Perry Dogs on the, on the subject. So that will be number 11 on the condition of approval. Um, then 
staff just received an email from Bank West regarding the values of the surrounding properties, especially the property. So just one second. Can't get an address for Patricia. Okay, so you can look at the, the, the map on the screen. So the property of Patricia Johnson is this one right here. So they have a, um, a concern about the, the value. Um, they are against the requested use. Uh, the requested use for this conditional use permit is to allow single Y mobile home to be used as a single family residence. Essentially, this is a residential use um, in a general agriculture district and it is in harmony with the future land use of rural residential district. And this conditional use permit is um, request because the single Y mobile home doesn't meet the um, zoning ordinance section 304 of a minimum a minimum of 20 feet wide. The property about to the west. So this is this is the one. Uh, all four of this has a, a single Y mobile homes used as a single family residence. Um, so it is co a common structure in the general agriculture district. Staff cannot predict how the requested use will affect pr a property value in the surrounding properties. And um, staff recommend approval of conditional use permit CU20 with 11 conditions. Thank you. Uh, first, my, my first question is, is could you um, restate item 11, the new condition that you wanted to add? Yes. So it is that the applicant works with County Natural Resources Director to control the paradox on the subject property. Thank you. Are there any further questions for staff on this item? Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. I was just going to ask, I heard you say that there is one uh, mobile home on the far west property. Is that correct? So there's, um, there's not one, there's four. Okay, okay. that's what yep. I was getting at. Yep, How many? yep, there's four right here, here, and the one to the south, directly south, and one right here. And this is the single fam uh, single Y mobile home is a common structure to be used in um, single family residence in the general agriculture district. Thank you. Mr. Thank Chair. Mr. Chairman. I'm going to go to Ron, then we'll go to Sandy. Sandy's first. It doesn't matter. Um, I was just I going about the that first one. To I've read the Bank West mm -hmm. letter and the indications that notification went to the wrong address, et cetera. And also that, you know, they would like to research whether or not there's a negative value on the deceased lady's property, um, whether there is a negative value or not, mm -hmm. to me is not the point. The point is, I believe they ought to be given time to talk to appraisers or just become a little more familiar with the fact that there are other mobile homes out there because it sounds like they haven't had time to digest it and given that it's you know a banking institution they might not move real quickly so I I would propose we postpone approval until the next meeting just to give them time to understand that there may not be any negative impact one way or the other. <clears throat> That's it. <laughs> Is there further discussion on the item? Okay, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Ron. 
Is there any uh, information on what type of mobile home? Because I've seen some really nice uh, single family mobile homes, they're single wide. And, uh, and I've seen some pretty shoddy existing mm. stick built house. So I'd like to, and j looking at the general location, it doesn't, I agree that it would probably be in harmony. I just wondered that if there's some criteria that they have to follow relative to the type of mobile home that would have to go on there. Just one second. <laughs> So that isn't any criteria except that um, the mobile home must have factory installed wood hardboard or siding with wood appearance. Um, and the mobile home must have a factory installed peak, non peaked, non reflective roof. And is there an age criteria? No. Was there a size criteria? Um, if it's less than 20 foot wide, um, they have to request a conditional use permit for the single fam a single wide mobile home. That's why this is um, a requested use. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Um, if we'd all look at our book uh, from the picture, the rapid map picture, and is Mitch, Mr. Letcher here? Did he come? Okay. I, let's see if I'm right on this. You'll tell me whether I'm right. You, you can come up and maybe you can answer my question too. It shows what I think is, uh, if you see all the dots, that's the prairie dog towns. And if we, if we hamstring this, this particular person, we've got some more there that are going into other properties according to our pictures. If you look at our picture, we have quite an infestation on one, two, three properties and a fourth uh, over here in the south. And, and I see yours is 5190, just for the record, yours is over in the corner on our picture. On that one, it's kind of turned around. I couldn't find you. Okay, I, I own the, the subject lot we're talking about and the one to the west of it. Okay. The one with not many on it, but there's some you're getting. It looks like you're trying to yeah. or there's been some control over there. But there's two, uh, two of them that are about equal. And uh, there's a lot of investation on that, if that's the correct air picture, which then would make me more inclined to continue this thing to give a little help. I mean, if they try to solve theirs, they may not be able to get it all done, just like he hasn't been able to get it done because the next one over isn't getting it done. It's 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 Is like any prairie dog it? problem. Is what done? Prairie dog. I was saying I would support continuation, but for another reason. Go ahead, Mr. Letcher. Thank you. Okay, I, and I talked to Scott this morning, and I just acquired these properties in May. So I've been cleaning up the area, I've hauled several loads to the dump and scrap iron and such. But I also have another guy coming in to help me kill the prairie dogs this month. So I never even got to get there before somebody said something. So, but that is on my list of things to do. My main problem with this trailer is, is I bought it in an auction on the 3rd of, of uh, November. I had 30 days to get it out. I came down to get a permit to move it to subject property find out that I, I can't do that till I get the, the basic paperwork done. Well, they were nice enough to give me an extra 30 days. Well, n this week is the 30 days and I got to get it off his property because he's got the property sold. And I've got no place to take this trailer to other than three miles away to my own property. So that's why I'm here just to try to get these unconditional permits going. And I'll do anything to do to get the permits, but I need to move this trailer out. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Ron. I think item 11 uh, addresses the prairie dogs. We just we just heard that. Item 11 does address the prairie dog issue. So, uh, and I'm going to recommend staff's approval for recommendation, so I'll make that motion. Motion on item Motion to approve item. the conditional use permit for item 7. Item 7, is there a second? Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Yes, I've got one. 
it, when you say your properties, you have more than one out there, and you're Mike? No, I own the, the other 10 acres next to it. This one. Both, it's a 20 acre piece. I see this one here, 5190 would, would this go into one, This one here. Yep. Oh, the other 10 acres, okay, those two yeah. that are next to this one. Yep. Okay. That's a lot of help as far as getting rid of them. If, the, if that number 11 conditions in there where they've got to work to try to do it too. That's because that's the, the bulk of the infestation is on those three properties. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. You know, I'm, um, I, I will support the motion, but I, I, um, I think that Sandy's suggestion, I guess, to continue this um, is, uh, except for the circumstances that you're, you find yourself in, in terms of a timeline, I would support the idea of continuing it because I do think that there, I mean, there's no question that there was a, a, a hiccup in getting this mailed, getting it to the right people uh, in, you know, in a timely manner. And they do, the bank does have this fiduciary responsibility and we're essentially kind of cutting them off at the knees for them to, um, to um, administer that. And it, it, on the face of it, it doesn't seem uh, you know, exactly fair uh, rushing this through, but I, uh, I, first of all, I, Given the area, I, I really don't think there is a de, you know devaluing of the real estate because of the one more um, single wide mobile home. Um, but it is unfortunate, I'll say that, that the bank won't have the opportunity to really find that out themselves and to do their duty. So this is, I mean, it's, I appreciate the situation, sir. And so I will support um, the, the staff recommendation for you to move ahead. But I just wanted to be on record that it, it is an unfortunate situation we find ourselves in. Uh, question for staff. Is there a middle ground here where um, the, uh, the, the Mr. Letcher can move the, the, the mobile home to the site, yet not hook it up and do all these other things and allow the two weeks uh, additional review for the bank to happen? Is, is that a possibility or is that a no-go? Good afternoon again. Um, in the past, we have allowed people to get a temporary building permit um, and not hook it up just to place it there in the interim. Um, and if the conditional, with the understanding that if the conditional use permit isn't approved, that they'd have to remove it. So I would suggest that to the commission as, a, as an alternate solution here to uh, well, go, go with maybe both parties. Uh, Mr. Chair, maybe I can make a substitute motion. Go ahead, Ron. And Kind of uh, follow what Brittany just said. Uh, that uh, continue this for two weeks. I think it's. I think everybody agree it's a go. But just for some technical reasons, uh, hold off and continue it for two weeks. But provide uh, the applicant a building permit so that he can move the single wide mobile home to the ten acre lot. Is there a second? I'd second that motion and second further discussion on this subs on the amended motion. Just one in support of it. I see that the letter even from the bank lists that they've been listed as an address since 2015, but somehow they still didn't get a copy of this. We just go, it says, I'm sorry. It says in the middle of this paragraph, it says the bank has been listed with the county treasurer with our mailing address at Bank West, et cetera, et cetera, since 2015. So uh, the address, um, we just go off of the, um, the GIS. Uh, rampant map, which we use with the, um, with the. Oh, when you hand your list to mm -hmm. the property owner, in right. this case, the Smith. Right, it's like, this is that property and on here okay. that still have this address. So we go off of this record. And um, so the treasurer office might have a, a different address, but this is what we have. And we have not been notified that an address has been changed. So, so you, we just do it. When you notified the Smiths, mm -hmm. it didn't include the other address. Correct. Okay. Seems odd, yeah. but that's all right. So, yeah. Further questions, discussion? So may I? Go ahead, Kathy. I just want to clarify. So the motion then that's on the floor is to 
approve a temporary building permit? Is that, I mean, or, but that's, this is a conditional the, use the mo permit. The motion so does, on, the motion on the floor is to um, postpone this item or continue this item for two weeks. Okay. And then at that point, staff will provide uh, Mr. Letcher a temporary building permit so he can move it, move his, the, the mobile home to the property, but he will not be able to hook anything up. But that really won't. Smith, the, um, that, I'm sorry, sir. But that really won't serve, that really won't solve his, your problem, will it, if we don't approve this for two weeks? It will solve his problem because it will allow him to move the mobile home to the property. He just will not be able to hook it up. I see. Okay. Very good. And in two weeks, uh, assuming that this all checks out and sounds like there's a, somewhat of a consensus that it should check out, but uh, assuming that it does, then he would get approval after at that okay. time. Any questions from the audience on this before the commission votes? Anyone else wish to speak on this item? Hearing none, seeing none, further questions on, on the motion? So the motion is to continue um, conditional use permit 2030 uh, for two weeks. And that meeting will be? January 11th. January 11th. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Item eight. Uh, Cody Sack Planning Department. Item eight is conditional use permit CU 20-31. It's to allow a single wide mobile home to be used as a single family residence in a general agriculture district. The applicant is Cindy Watts Wasson. Uh, currently as the property sits at zone general agriculture district, it is 10 acres. There is special flood hazard area on the property. It's the hundred year floodplain zone A. Um, currently there is a cabin on the property with no building permit, a storage container with no building permit and a loafing shed slash barn with no building permit. There was a double light on the property, but it has been removed with a removal permit. This was routed around for interdepartment review. Uh, County Highway Department requested that the existing approach onto 155th Avenue needs to be used. Uh, the County Ordinance Enforcement Officer found that structures did not have proper building permits. Uh, this was addressed in the conditions of approval. Uh, the County Environmental Planner um, said that there is currently a valid on-site wastewater treatment system on the property and it will um it it's sized properly for the single wide that's proposed emergency services requested a condition of approval that they post the physical address where the driveway intersects 155th avenue that was also made a condition considerations for a conditional use permit request are the seven criteria uh, for criteria one the single wide mobile home are similarly used for single family residences and should not be detrimental or endanger the public health, safety, or general welfare to the public. Criteria two, this conditional use permit should not change the residential use of the property and thus should not have any long-term negative effects and or on the use of enjoyment of other properties in the immediate vicinity. Criteria three, allowing this conditional use permit should not affect the normal orderly development or improvement of any of the surrounding vacant property in the area. The future land use of the property is also agriculture district. Uh, criteria four, the adequate util or the subject property is served with a private on-site wastewater treatment system and a water and a water well. It, it already has access off of 155th Avenue, and 155th Avenue is maintained by County Highway. Criteria five, the access to the property will be provided off the approach off of 155th Avenue. Uh, criteria six, the current zoning is general agriculture district. The single wide mobile homes are you are allowed use in a, with a conditional use permit. And criteria seven, the future land use of the property is agriculture district. Agriculture <coughs> district allows for larger lots with residential as a use. Um, Mm -hmm. 
On November 24th, the applicant Cindy Wasserton came in to apply for a building permit. She was told that she needed a conditional use permit. She was granted a temporary building permit to allow the single wide mobile home to be placed on the subject property while she went through the conditional use process. Uh, the applicant is aware that if it is not approved, she will need to remove the double wide off the property or the single wide off the property. On December 14th, the county ordinance enforcement officer performed a site visit. There is a storage container that appears to be over 144 square feet with no building permit. Uh, there is a cabin with a porch. It's kind of hard to see in there, but there is a porch on the back side of this um, that is over 144 square feet. If there's living air, living space in the cabin, it'll need to be removed or the applicant will have to apply for a conditional use permit for a guest house um, prior to approval for the of the building permit for the single wide mobile home. Uh, there's also a loafing shed or barn that does not have a building permit. Um, there is some structures that are located. There's a structure and some debris that is located within the 100 year floodplain. Uh, that will need to be removed or an approve, approval of a floodplain development permit will need to be obtained before a building permit can be issued. Those were made conditions and staff is recommending approval of conditional use permits U20-30 with 11 conditions. Thank you. I guess the my first thing here before I open it up for questions, this is actually 2031, right? I just noticed this, but the previous one was 2030. The agenda says 2031. So in the agenda, re in the report, it should say 2031. Correct. Makes sense. Okay. Uh, questions for staff on this item? I guess my question is, is the applicant aware of all of these items that need uh, to be taken care of and addressed? I attempted to contact her last week. I could not get in touch with her. Uh, I will try again this week to let her know. Okay. Um, I do have a speaker request form on here. Anybody else questions before we go there? Okay. Speak, we have a speaker request for Jack uh, Von I, sir, if you would please come up. And then when you get to the um, lectern, uh, state your name for the record for everyone. Thank you. Hello, commissioners. Um, it is, I think you answered one of my uh, questions is that there was a, a temporary permit till they got it moved in there. Is that a true statement that they, uh, the, the trailer house is already there. I, I was to understand that that trailer house wasn't supposed to go in until after this was done. That trailer house is sitting in there and being wired this morning and whatever else they did since I left this morning. So that's why I was wondering. And then there was a double wide there, which everything that's around there, there's people that tried getting double or single wide, but they made them get a double wide. And I don't quite understand why we should be different than not be able to get that a double wide in there. I, I live right beside it. I live to the to the left of that picture right there. And who who are you, sir? You I'm did... Jack Von Eye. Okay, thank you. And you're a neighbor? I'm their neighbor. <clears throat> it, it isn't like I, I really want to be mad at them or anything. Sure. I just want it right. Sure. And I just needed to understand who you were in your yep. position. So yep. thank you. But that that's pretty much all. There's just a lot of things. Like you say, the, the shed that was there, I could care about that for the horse barn because that's what it is. And uh, I, I didn't realize. And they've been on that property. Prob they were there before I was. I moved there probably about five years ago, somewhere in there. So anyway, long story short, um, I, I just want whatever's going to be there is right. But like I say, the, the trailer house is being hooked up as we speak today. I'm sure there's water. I know the electricians were there this morning and ah. there's probably power there. And they're going to need something because the weather's going to get cold. And not that I'm trying to be mean to them or anything, but a, a double wide would have been way nicer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Further questions on this item? Yes. Yep. Cody, where does that fit with your temporary permit? What the gentleman just informed us of. So she got a temporary permit uh, to place that on the property. Um, 
she did sign a document that said if this wasn't approved, though, that she understood that she had to have it removed. Um, other than that, uh, I she was told not to hook it up, um, but it appears that she has. I can't, I can't necessarily that they got it on, and I haven't seen the lights in there, but there was, there, there's been utility uh, companies there. Why don't you restate that so it's on the, the record, and then we'll just come up to the lectern. Yes. Go ahead and state kind of what he, he mentioned. Okay. Um, he said that he couldn't, he didn't have definitive proof that it had been hooked up yet. It just appeared that it has. Come, sir, come on up and state it for the record. I, I'm sorry, but there, there was um, an electrical company that was there this morning. And I know there wasn't any lights in the house uh, for the last couple of days since it's been moved there. But um, I know there was electrical. They said, I, I don't remember the name, but it was uh, it wasn't. They said that it was an electric company. And I'm, I'm assuming that them lights probably got hooked up. So, OK, thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Ron. Is this a, if I read it right, a 17 acre parcel? I read it right. 17.54. So the issue before this, it was 10 acres, and we basically approved that. So I'm going to have a hard time denying this. Uh, but if there's somebody doing something that they shouldn't be doing, they need to, we need to go out there and take care of that. But I fundamentally approved this uh, conditional use. And uh, she was, so a little history, she was given the temporary building permit because the single line mobile home was to be moved on on December 8th and with the how the planning commission fell and then the 30 day appeal period she wouldn't have been able to put it on until January 22nd so she would have had to go through all of the loan process again um, so she was granted a, a temporary building permit for for the mobile home that's where you can put the mobile home on the property but don't hook up utilities is that correct I understand yes. that right thank you. yes Mr. Chair, go ahead. Our staff does these things on a discretionary basis, which I think is fine to help our citizens. But when, when people don't comply or they vaguely just make assumptions about what they can or cannot do before they have an approval on something, when they're working on the approval, they should have some idea what's approved and what isn't approved. Mm -hmm. For instance, Part of me wants to just delay it for two weeks and we'll see what happens. Is it there? Is it hooked up or not? We'll find out. And and the, the person can wait. They knew better. I mean, it. where does the discretion end? Maybe the next one uh, wants it delivered six months in advance and decides to hook it up. I, I've said enough. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. I have two things. One is that I think we have to be mindful that we don't know that she's hooked it up. This could be right. preliminary kind of electrical work in anticipation of hooking it up. It could be, you know, other legitimate kind of work. So I think we need to, we shouldn't jump to that conclusion without a little more information. And secondly, I think there is another typo here or correction that needs to be made on page two of six under existing conditions. Uh, B, it says it's 10 acres and it's really 17.54, right? Correct, yes. Okay. What was that, Catherine? Under, on page two of six. Right. Existing conditions, uh, under this B, it says oh, it's 10, 10 acres. acres. It's really 17.54. Noted. I, I guess, I, and to comment on what Kathy said, I, uh, there, there are all the time items on these agendas where people have either started um, or um, moved ahead and and uh, didn't uh, do what they were supposed to do. They get extensions, and I, I would like to think that that's kind of the neighborly way that, that the people on the commission have approached these things. Fundamentally, I don't have a concern about uh, them moving a new mobile home on the site. So um, although I sympathize with what you're saying, Charlie, and it's a little bit aggravating, I, I, I don't see why we would delay this. That's just my personal opinion. Mr. Chair, I Go ahead, move Rob. the proof. The uh, conditional use permit, item eight. Motion for approval. Second. Second. 
Motion and second. Further discussion? Seeing none. Uh, before the commission votes on this, is there any further discussion from anyone in the audience? Hearing none, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. No. Motion carries. Which brings us to item nine. Good afternoon, commissioners. Jason Fennison, county planner. Agenda item number nine is layout plan 20-42 for Tim and Tara Duda. The other affected landowners are Bruce and Faye Peterson. Agent and surveyor is DC Scott Surveyors. Uh, site location, it's located off of Danube Lane in Edelweiss Mountain Development. The applicants have requested layout plan 20-42 in order to reconfigure interior lot lines and create lot 17R and 23R of Edelweiss Mountain Development Subdivision. Uh, as the property sits today, you can see on the left-hand side of the screen there, uh, all of them are vacant of any structures or utilities. They're all zoned suburban residential district and none of them have special flood hazard area on them. Uh, lot 17 specifically is 0.76 acre. Uh, lot 18 is 0.62 acre. And lot 23 is 1.23 acres. And it does contain a section line, as you can see, running uh, pretty much through the top third of that uh, property. Uh, proposed lots, uh, there are no special, there's still no special flood hazard area on the property. They are vacant of any structures and they are going to continue to be stone suburban residential district. Uh, lot 17R will become 1.17 acres and contain a 30 foot wide private access easement for Danube Lane and an additional 15 foot utility easement. Uh, lot 23R will be 1.43 acres, will contain a 30 foot wide private access easement for Danube Lane and another 30 foot wide private access and utility easement as well as another 15 foot uh, utility easement and it does continue to contain the section line on that property. The request was sent out for interdepartmental review. Department of Equalization did have comment on this. Uh, they said that their understanding is that there is one Timothy Duda involved as the landowner uh, one parcel is uh, deeded under Tim Duda. One of them is under Timothy Duda. They would prefer to see that cleaned up before they move forward. Uh, if they could get that one name, uh, whether it be Tim or Timothy, on both of the deeds moving forward. And I did make that a condition of approval for them. Uh, staff's analysis of the request. The proposed lots do not appear to reduce the size of the existing lots below a minimum lot size required of a suburban residential district. Also, there is a 30 foot wide private access and utility easement on the proposed lot 23R. Penn County subdivision regulations uh, require that the width of the access easement be 40 feet wide, and this is also uh, included as a condition of approval. Also, Pennington County subdivision regulations require percolation test and soil profile hold information for each of the proposed lots, which will utilize an on-site wastewater treatment system. However, this, the existing and proposed lots are served by a community lagoon system. Therefore, the profile hole information percolation tests are not required. There is a portion of section line on proposed lot 23R. Pennington County subdivision regulations state that where an existing section line right of way or portion of section line right of way is located within a new subdivision or adjoining any portion of a new subdivision, the entire 66 feet of section line right of way shall be dedicated and approved by the developer. And this is included as a condition of approval. And with that, staff finds no significant issues with the applicant's request as it appears to be in harmony with existing lots and current land uses in the area. And staff recommends approval of LPL 20-42 with conditions. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Ron. So Idlewise was platted around 1972 by Ted Denners, who basically created that subdivision for vacation home rentals. And now the county has an ordinance where you gotta have a minimum of one acre to uh, be a BHR. So by doing this, I'm always in favor of the decrease in density. And, and now you're gonna take two of those lots and you're gonna or take three lots and make two lots that'll have more utilities. So uh, I'm totally in favor of this. My question is lot 23R, there's a 30 foot wide access and utility easement that goes through there. It looks like there's a dedicated road for, I don't know, is that Dan, Danube Lane? Yes, it is. And yet 
the section line was was not vacated when the subdivision was yeah. platted. Is that correct? I could not find record that it was vacated. So if he then uh, plants this, like like you just said, he'll he'll need to get an exception to improving the section line right away. Correct. He request a variance for that. Okay. We've done a lot of these in uh, in Idlewise, have we not? Where we've combined combined several lots into less density uh, to get over the one acre limit. Is this um, have we has this been tackled before? This section line that goes through the middle of the subdivision. Right. So they either vacate them or they, uh, in this case, uh, they were to ask for a variance to improving it during for the platting process. So it would be two separate things. Uh, if that is, in fact, not vacated, then they would still have to apply the setbacks to the section line. I don't suppose you know whether or not all the utilities go through that access and utilities versus the section line? Or I didn't get anything back from the utility companies. Okay. In interdepartmental review. All right. I don't have any further questions. Would anybody in the audience wish to speak on this item? Seeing none, hearing none, the recommendation from staff is for approval of layout plan LPL 20-42 with nine conditions. I'll move approval. So I'll second. Motion and second. Further discussion? Hearing none, seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Brings us to item 10. Agenda item number 10 is layout plan 20-43. The applicants are Alvin and Lois Rudd. Other affected landowners are Stanley and Marvin Negebauer. The agent and surveyor is Anderson Engineers. The applicants Alvin and Lois Rudd have requested layout plan 20-43 in order to create Rudd Tract and Lot 8R. For ease of description, uh, I've labeled the existing lots A and B uh, on the left-hand side of the screen for you. Lot A is zoned General Agriculture District, which carries a 40-acre minimum lot size. It is currently 289.23 acres and is vacant of any structures or utilities. Lot B is currently zoned General Agriculture District, which carries a 40-acre minimum lot size. However, it is 10 acres and it is legal non-conforming. Uh, it does contain a single-family residence with attached garage built in 1977, an on-site wastewater treatment system, as well as an operating permit and a 20 by 40 shop building also built in 1977. Uh, proposed lots on the right hand side of the screen. Uh, Rudd tract is in green. That'll continue to be zone general agriculture district. We'll move to 40 acres. Uh, will contain the single family residence and attached garage as well as the on-site wastewater treatment system and shop building. Lot 8R uh, will continue to be zone gen general agriculture district consisting of 24.07 acres and will be vacant of any structures or utilities. The request was sent out for interdepartmental review and County Highway Department did have a comment stating that an access easement will be needed, will need to be created for lot 8R or this plaque will be creating an isolated parcel. Okay. The existing approach needs to be used to access uh, down Bow Road. Uh, this will be included as a condition of approval. Department of Equalization also had a comment here. They, they wanted to to see if the, uh, if the survey will be able to provide acreage balance for the southeast quarter, basically the remainder uh, that's left over of lot A after this platting process. Uh, register, and that's also included as a condition of approval, and also Register of Deeds had a comment for interdepartmental review stating that the legal description is not acceptable. They need to come up with a subdivision name. It was suggested to Mr. and Mrs. Rudd that they call it lots one and two of Rudd subdivision or something new. And this is also uh, added as a condition of approval. Staff's analysis of the request, the proposed lot 8R appears, appears to reduce the size of the existing lot below the minimum size of 40 acres required in a general agriculture district. Therefore, a rezone and comprehensive plan amendment or a variance to the lot size will be required. Proposed lot 8R appears to become an isolated tract, or an isolated parcel, I'm sorry. Uh, means of legal access will need to be established and shown on the minor plat. 
Uh, Pennington County subdivision regulations require percolation to test and profile hole information for each proposed lot. Proposed rud track contains an existing on-site wastewater treatment system. However, proposed lot 8R will require profile hole information and percolation test. Uh, there are portions of two section lines on proposed rud tract uh, on the southern portion as well as on the eastern portion. Uh, with that, uh, Pennington County subdivision regulations state that where an existing section line or portion of section lines of the right of way is located within a new subdivision or adjoining any portion of a new subdivision, the entire 66 feet of section line right of way shall be dedicated and approved by the developer. This is also included as a condition of approval. And with that, staff finds no significant issues with the request as it appears to be in harmony with uh, current and future land uses in the area. And staff recommends approval of layout plan 20 43 with conditions. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff on this item? Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Kathy. Yeah, I do have a, I'm just a little confused on this. Yeah. So, the, how, so how will the, where will the access point be for this, the rude track, the one that you have in green? So it, it appears that they are creating a flagpole type of lot where they'll take access off of down by road. Sir, if you want to hold tight, we'll, we'll, we'll get to you as soon as we're done asking staff so questions. The, so Thank you. So Road is the road, on, as I look at it, on the right-hand right side. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then when emergency services has their comment, they, they, want, when they want to make sure that this, that address is posted both on the, on the structure and at the point of the driveway. And I don't see that in the conditions. Is that, I mean, how, how is that handled? Or, it's already posted. Okay. Sir, we'll just have the staff answer the questions and then, and then we'll go to you, please. Thank you. Yep, and that's pretty common for uh, Pennington County Ordinance number 20 and how we post those at the intersection of that road as well as on the house if it exceeds, uh, the driveway exceeds 75 okay. feet. So the reason that it's not addressed in the comments. It's because it's already correct. It's already posted in the way that they that's right. Emergency search. I see. Okay. Very good. Thank you. For the questions for staff. Okay. So, if you'd like to come up now, please. Yeah. No, I just uh, try to keep things in order. Let's go ahead and state your name for the record. And we had got the. The letter on Saturday. What, what's your name, sir? Name, sir. Pardon me. Your name, sir. Just oh. let me know who you are. Uh, Elvin Rudd. Yeah. Okay. My wife, Lois, and the, yeah. Okay, go ahead. I just wanted to have your name on the record. Go ahead. Oh, that's fine. Uh, we got the letter on Saturday, and uh, so we got a hold of our surveyor about two hours ago to kind of talk about this a little bit, and. Mm -hmm. After reading through, you know, the recommendations and they all make sense, but what we're actually trying to do here is acquire 40 acres and then that lot 8R popped up uh, because it was surveyed or something before state law says they have to do it again or something. We, so that was kind of a little bit confusing. We, we're looking at the, the green, you know, right. track, and that's an even 40 acres. And then this other came up, and what our surveyor today recommended to us to do is, and talking, uh, this land around here is Nagabauer uh, land. My wife is a former Nagabauer. So what they're in the process of trying to do is, uh, kind of balance out the, the land that initially Lois was supposed to get 40 acres, but then we, you see what a lot is, it's a half mile from the nearest road. Mm -hmm. And we used to have, and we still do have an easement right across Nagabonger property, but we want something a little bit more permanent. So that's kind of why you got the long line there. That we put in a road some years ago. So we wanted to incorporate that road into our property so we wouldn't have, you know, if this property ever sells, 
you know, another owner might not feel so fond of people driving across their land. So that's what we're trying to do. This, this red area, which he's, the surveyor suggested that we vacate that. What? Because that, that's just pasture and hayland. That's all it's ever going to be. You see, there's a railroad track behind it uh, to the left of it. And it's way out in the middle of a pasture and a hay field. You'll never, you know, uh, maybe we did something wrong when we tried to uh, set this up, you know, filling the application out or what. But we'd like to see the a lot, 8R, just go back to the mega hours. And that was an originally about 40 acres in there. So we actually kind of traded that land there for for the land that would allow us to have access to our 10 acres there. So does that kind of make sense? Or? Can we also manage another? Could, could you go ahead and state your name for the record as well? And... Lois Rudd. Okay. We also ran into another little um, issue, the neighbor on the corner who had never had that land surveyed so from my there. brothers, um, decided he wanted more acreage today because that's where his fence has been forever. So the surveyor recommended us to have the back north side now resurveyed and then very, um, do away with those two lots for egg. So the boys' pastures will be set free and we should be too. <laughs> so instead of fighting with him, um, who knows who would win? It's another case. So they just allowed that to do. So now we have to go back in and have that resurveyed. Yeah. So we need to know what we need to do now because we didn't know this until about an hour ago. Okay. So let me see if I can put this together. Should we start the whole process and vacate it and then at and the surveyor would have to redo that. Where do we go from here? So I don't know about vacating 24 acres. That doesn't sound right to me. But the what, what I understand you to mean is you guys want to you want to subdivide uh, and just have the red track, the 40 acres, and lot eight R would then go back to the remainder of the southwest quarter. And that would go into the the lots would go back into the pasture land. To the, egg, to, the to, to the egg land. Yeah. That's where it's at. So it, are, isn't our are you in a time crunch to do the separation of property? Because it sounds to me like there should be a do over on the uh, on we, the uh, on the layout plan. We have to do over, but we don't know where to go. Do we go back and have a surveyor and then start in again? and then come back. I, I, I think that the surveyor should come back and do a separate layout plat based on okay. the changes that you guys okay. want and res resubmit that. And maybe we can, as the county can waive the, the second fees for that or something like that. But do you see this differently, Brittany? It sounds like what's up on the board here, which is what we've been asked to vote on, uh, is not anywhere close to what the reality is of that they want. So what can we do with the lots? Um, because they want that back in their egg land. Yeah, and these are questions that I would suggest that you and, and the, your neighbors or, or the counterparts that you're working with and your surveyor all sit down and, and go through these items to come we up with. You don't have to go through the county to change that to back to agriculture? Rezone it well, to a different... So what, what it was always the 40 acres was a 40 acres egg and now it's going the other direction but this this 24 acres that are going to be non-egg or is it going to still stay in there i don't want my brothers to have to pay any more than for me than what they have to okay <laughs> so i'm trying to figure out how to do the lots into the eggs. He accidentally ran into the lots and he says, I just have to mark them. He we says, it's not a big deal. Why that had to be, you know, the lot 8R had to be done. But since there was a pin up there, then by state law, I guess he has to do that or something. But, uh, um, 
I have more questions than answers uh, at this point in, in my brain. Um, I don't know if I have specific answers for you other than the, the items. Uh, I would work with your surveyor to come up with a preliminary plan okay. that you would like, or a layout plan that you would like us to, to review and approve. Um, and if it's not time sensitive, I think that that's probably the best approach here as opposed to trying to get it figured out today. Okay. We, we can't make that decision that's for fine. you. We that's just fine. It. Then we can start over and go from there. We Mr. Chair. Sure. Cancel and then it was only an hour away. So we thought, well, let's sure. come into the meeting, talk to you. And we had more questions than answers yeah. too. So, but just my understanding is on that 24 acres up there, which is all part of that, it was like 289 acres. Sure. So that's just pasture land, hay land. It will never change. I, they don't have any intention of developing it because it's way out in the middle of a mile section, you know, all that. Uh, so is it possible when, when we get with the surveyor, he reduce, he redo the line a little bit and then to vacate that at the same time so that could be incorporated together? Does that make sense? You, um, the word vacate is throwing me for a loop here, but um, I guess my, my question is, is one, I do think you should go back to the surveyor and work this out. My question for staff is, can they, um, is there a way for them not to pay the fees the second time coming through? That's a hundred dollars fee or something. Yeah. Right, the fees for the layout plan are pretty minimal and for this reason, um, I think that they should resubmit a new plan because I think it would be um, somewhat confusing um, with this. We'd probably just deny this layout plan and then resubmit a new plan with the correct information. Okay. Now, Mr. Chair. Go ahead. I'm just trying to, a lot of moving parts here, but I think one of the things you want to do is to keep this stuff in the red. If we looked at how that's being assessed, it's probably being assessed as egg. And so that means the taxes are low. And so you're saying, if we start changing stuff, are we going to go into another? Uh, so we might have to get the county assessor involved with this conversation too to make sure that you don't do something that's going to jeopardize how your property is assessed. Right, Just so make sure we, uh, everybody's addressing that as well. That's what we're trying to. That's what we're trying. You need 40 acres minimum for uh, to be assessed as egg. Yeah, yeah, so it needs to go back because we did the switch. So as you work in the future, I just make sure that you don't do anything that would jeopardize that. And, and the county will help you figure and those out. To further this, is there a, uh, do you guys have like teams meetings or something where you can set this up with the surveyor and these folks to get all these questions answered in, in one meeting so their surveyor does exactly what their intention is and we streamline this a little bit? Yeah, we'd be happy to set up a meeting with their surveyor and them and work through these these issues. Um, okay. Moving forward though, uh, the, the request for red tract, all the conditions that I have in there applying to that, will continue to apply with the okay. new plan that they have coming forward. The only thing that'll change is that the conditions I put in there addressing lot 8R will fall off. Okay. So for for the intent of a layout plan, those conditions will carry forward. So whether it's denied or approved today, then you know, you'll see them again. Yeah. So is it better for us to deny this without prejudice today and resubmit a new plan or continue this uh, for revision? We can just start over. I think that'd be best. So yeah, deny without good. prejudice. Correct. Thank you. Further questions for staff? So then they just come in, uh, just fill out a new application. Is that what we yep. do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I'll be in touch with you right after the meeting. Okay. Oh, okay. Thank Mr. Chair. Go ahead. You hear me often enough grumbling at the citizens that aren't so open about this, but they thank you, Rudds, for being so transparent about your concerns about this. And I do move we deny without prejudice. Second. Motion second. Is there further discussion? Before we vote on this, anybody in the chambers want to speak on this? Seeing none, hearing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. No. Uh, note the one, no. All right. Motion carries, brings us to item 11. Good morning, or excuse me. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, item 11 is an ordinance amendment OA 20-07 to amend section 200 
of the Pennington County Zoning Ordinance, the establishment of zoning districts and map reference. Uh, this ordinance and amendment is in response to our approval of our comprehensive plan, BUTA 2040. Um, our comprehensive plan had some zoning districts that weren't addressed in our current zoning ordinance. Um, so we had to take those into consideration um, for our new um, for our new comprehensive plan because uh, we struggle with um, doing ordinance amendments and rezones at this time because there's or there's zoning districts that don't exist in our zoning ordinance at this time. Um, so this is in response to that. Some of the big changes, uh, just uh, we didn't do the strike and redo because it would have been very confusing. Um, so I'll just go over some of the main points and then we can go line by line or page by page. Um, we did add um, item F and G into this under the general district provisions under 204. Um, those are two changes, the dead-end road system and the one principal structure per lot. We did add item L and M. Those were individually in each zoning district, but because it applied across the board to the zoning districts, we took them out as a general district provision, uh, so they weren't in each zoning district separately. Uh, Brittany, where are you at now? Oh, sorry. I am on item, or page four and five under section 204. Oh, I thought you were on page five. Hmm. Right, so the L and M is on page five. Okay. So you're on page five? Yes. Okay. So is that where H says no proposed changes? Yep. H, I, J, K, there's no proposed changes to those sections. Um, like I said, we did add item L and M because those were individually in each zoning district, so we just pulled them out so they were in one place. Um, we did add item N also for screening, and then item O was floodplain, which was already there, but it got moved into a different um, numbering process. So then going into the sections, um, the biggest change that you'll see in these is we took out the listing for the conditional uses. Um, so the only uses that are there are the use by rights, which are the allowed uses. Um, those were also alphabetized and split out because in some instances we had multiple uses on the line and we removed that and made them each individually and then alphabetized them. But we don't list any of the conditional uses. Uh, we assume that if it's not a use by right, then it would be a conditional use. Um, so that was removed. And going through here, those were some of the major changes. So I guess I can address questions, concerns, um, and just go page by page. Rich, I don't know how I you just got it. a question. I've seen a lot of different counties and their zoning, and it looks like they, somebody went out there and they found a county that looked like Pennington County, and they just, they took a template. And, and do you know where these originated out in the first place, the ones that we're looking at? Um, I'm just curious. I, sure, I do not. I actually went back and looked at some of the old, old ordinances, and some of these uses are the same ones that were back in the 70s. So, so all of the people, once these are in place, all of the properties that are no longer in compliance will all fall under legal nonconforming until the 12th of never? Correct. So some of these didn't change. The biggest changes is that the agriculture district, um, because of our comprehensive plan, it went down to 10 acre minimum an agricultural district. So instead of having two separate agricultural district designations like general and limited, it will be one um, and it'll be the minimum 10 acres. Uh, there are, are going to be some allowed uses that will require there are some exceptions where they would require a minimum 40 acres. Um, I'm, I'm just saying, in general, all of the zoning things that we are changing, if a use is not in compliance, then it will fall under the legal nonconforming 
Is that correct? Correct. There are some, um, when you look at the zoning districts, rural residential will be the old low density residential. So they're synonymous with each other. So any of the use by rights don't change. So in those zoning districts and suburban residential, residential, those use by rights don't change. So if they're zoned that now and moving forward, they, those use by rights won't change. So the biggest changes are going to be that people can rezone to ranch at and urban residential. And then now there's another low density residential district that is in between um, the rural residential and the suburban residential. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. And I haven't found it yet, but I'm going to at least note it for you in case I find it. And you know how I read these things, and I lost it. I didn't have a highlighter at the time. On your page for your home occupation, and I may have confused home office, too, because home office is certainly a, dif a different set of definitions. But somewhere in this, there's a reference, and it doesn't allow for the... Uh, accessory structure it just was it's there's another reference to that somewhere and it's only in the one it has to be in the primary structure and i couldn't find what page it was on i looked for it earlier but i'll find it yet when i go okay. home and get back to you because the accessory structure needs to be added to where that other was at it said it, there's a reference in one of these that it, it just won't allow a home occupation in an accessory structure it says uh, home occupation shall not change the residential character of the property or neighborhood and must be conducted wholly within the principal structure or accessory structure by a member of the family who resides yeah, in the primary so. residence. But there's another section where it refers to this same thing and it, it doesn't allow for the accessory structures, what I'm saying. Oh, and, the, and like the I'll old find part. I'll one of that? these. Yeah, it, it okay. definitely just doesn't include it. Okay. Um, I'll do a canvas here real quick. I mean, is, does, does everyone have dozens of comments where we should go page by page or should we uh, flip back and forth? Uh, any preferences from the group here on how to proceed? Uh, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Ron. No, you know, that's a lot of reading for, for us, especially if I can't go back and see what was changed. It would help me if there was a summary for each zoning change to say, just highlight these, these are the is it the significant changes or no changes is so that we could, I could try to focus on the pages that I need to focus on instead of trying to learn all the ordinances and in a short period of time and make a mistake and uh, missing something. Okay. Well, as far as like the zoning districts under 205, the use by rights did not change. Those are for agriculture. Those are the same as what was in our old general agriculture districts with the exception that we need to add sawmill <laughs> um, <laughs> under that Go ahead, section. Sandy. Well, I thought we went through all of this months ago and approved it all. So we did that on the comprehensive plan and now the ordinances have to catch up to the comprehensive plan. But doesn't this implement the comprehensive plan? This adapt this adapts the ordinance to all the changes that were made in the comprehensive plan. So, well, Mr. Chair, go ahead, Ron. Sandy, being a real estate appraiser, an example, Sandy, if you were hired to appraise a property that was zoned light industrial, and something that we've looked at for thirty years, it might be different under this new light industrial. So, I think it's really important we understand what changes have been made. So that uh, exactly, Kathy, did you have something to say? Yeah, I, uh, I, I guess I'm responding to your question about would you prefer the page by page, and I don't have a real strong opinion of that. But I've got a few kind of um, like two maybe pretty detailed kind of questions slash comment, and then one a little more overarching. So personally, I don't need to go page by page, but I, I mean, I could just address those, or I could just ask or discuss those. So that's okay. my two cents there. All right. Then why don't we go person by person this time, change it up. Sandy, do you have any specific changes or comments? No. Okay. Where do you, Kathy? Yeah, okay. So kind of a couple of specific ones is that the new section F under uh, 204, the dead end road system. 
Yes. Is that, where did that, I, mean, where, I guess the number 40 really is where I'm asking. So where did that 40 come from? What was the process to, how was that selected? So that actually came from our subdivision regulations. So this is consistent with our subdivision regulations. Okay. Um, where that 40 came from, like historically. No, I mean, that's, uh, right. you've answered it. Okay. It, so these just, you just took them from the subdivision regulations and put them into this section, which is called... Um, the zoning. The zoning. Okay, District, very yes. good. Um, does that apply to these others? Like the, well, like, well, L and M, of course, we know where they came from. So, um, N and O, did they come from other regulations that just moved in here? So O it was already there. It just got a different number, oh. I think it was, because we had added some. So that one had to get moved yep. down. And it's just reference to that that's another ordinance that addresses floodplain. And um, screening, there wasn't, it said it in our zoning district that you had to do screening, but there was no, what is screening? Oh, I see. Um, or what, what were the requirements of screening? So that's what that addressed. It's, so if it did require it, what was it? Yeah, okay. So. Um, and the other one that's a little bit particular is that when I'm looking through these um, allowed uses, I was a little con confused because under, let's see here, I'll get it here. Under the one that has a, for half of acre, so low density residential, I don't see that, um, that um, telecom facilities are allowed. But yet, on the ones that are even smaller, the 6,500 square feet suburban residential telecommunications facilities are allowed. So I was just kind of curious about about that. Is, oh, that one might have just been missed for that are one. Are they? I mean, is it which way are they missed? I mean, is it should they be allowed in all of these, or should the one that's missing it is should it be added, or should the one that's there be taken away? I believe they're allowed in all of them, and I would have to verify with Section 317. Okay, so even in like the low density residential, the half acre, the, the, the telecommunications facilities should be there. I believe so, let okay. me, sorry. I, I believe so, let me look in. I can bring it up real quick. I'm bringing it up here. It's allowed in low density. Is it allowed in SRD? Let me look. Yes. Yes, so it should be added to. Okay, so on um, page, whatever, I guess 11 maybe, under low density residential allowed uses, the telecommunications will be added there. Okay. Now my other question, really comment, and I, I really understand, I believe, why the all those lists of conditional uses aren't listed because I remember we're getting into that predicament a couple of times here where they're, the applicant asking for something that's not, it's not specifically listed. And so then there's the question of, well, you know, how do we handle that? But on the other hand, are, are, we, are, we, are we asking, are we getting, creating a situation where um, the applicants can come in and, and ask for a conditional use that clearly doesn't fit the this and then and then you know you'll have to say no and then you're creating a situation where you're going to have to it makes it more difficult I guess or it requires more justification and then there's the concern about well are you being very subjective there's no objectivity I guess about it and so I'm just wondering if it's really a good idea or there to take away all all the description about what the conditional uses would be allowed in those different zoning districts so that's what the seven criteria are for to, when we look at it. And the flip side of that, we have the opposite issue that if it says it's a conditional use, then people assume that it's just going to be allowed irregardless. So th that was kind of the argument back and forth that, you know, the staff had discussed quite a bit because, you know, if it's listed as a conditional use, people are automatically assume that they're going to get it irregardless of our seven criteria. Uh -huh. But that criteria is really what makes 
in a conditional use? Does it fit the neighborhood? Is it appropriate? Is it in harmony? And things like that. And everything's going to be on a case by case basis, uh -huh. um, depending upon you know where it's at. And I, so I guess so you're comfortable that the criteria are you know sound enough and robust, sufficiently robust that. They're re it's, so they're really workable in terms of working through whether the use would be allowed or not. Yes, I believe so, because when we look at conditional uses, just as, you know, Chuchima had explained, you know, with the single wide mobile homes, we know that those are, you know, uses that are common in the area. Those are the types of things that we look at uh -huh. um, for the, the conditional uses. Okay. All right. Mr. Thank Chair. You. Go ahead, Ron. Brittany. Where would the, you know, I'm working on a, as I mentioned, uh, working with these folks trying to create an event center. Mm -hmm. So now we've got the Cookie Lady on Highway 45. we got Summer Creek, which is a bed and breakfast event center. Where would that fall under this criteria? Um, I, was, uh, I doubt that there was even a, anything specifically mentioned for an event center, but how, would, how are we going to move forward if they want to proceed with this event center? How are we going to do that? So an event center, because it's not listed as a principal use, it would be a conditional use only because an event center is so broad. Every type of event center or whatever they're trying to do um, would be a little different than maybe the next. Um, in the next section, when we go to the 100s, we did um, start to define a lot of these uses so so it's easier so right now there's somewhat subjective of what what does it mean because we don't have them defined um, and when we get into the 100s you'll see that we defined a lot or of we them could, it could be a pud it could be a pud or overlay a or conditional it could use be, or it could be a conditional use just depending so it won't upon. necessarily fall under any particular zoning type Correct, because I, I think it would be more broad. Now, when you look at a PUD overlay and even a conditional use permit, you have to look at the general use by rights to see if it's even somewhat in harmony, where an event center is probably going to be more in harmony with something in highway service or commercial right. versus residential. Maybe some general agriculture, depending upon where it is and the uses sure. that are around it. How about uh, the mobile home park? You know, Mr. Allard's got the seven mobile homes on Highway 44, and he's on general commercial, so... What would he have to be zoned to legally if he wanted to create another new mobile home park? Um, all mobile home parks, in, in accordance with our ordinance, requires a conditional use because it's a very specific under the 300s okay. for it to be a conditional use. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, Kathy, if I understood your question right, you were saying we have these uses that are used by right. We have the seven items for the conditional use permit. But are there situations where we would say these are the items that are specifically not allowed in this zoning district? Was that where you were going with your question? No, not really. It, it's just that, you know, in the prior um, ordinance, it listed as examples, I think it really was intended, but it listed all these things that, uh, by example, that could be, that, that could receive conditional use permits, and, and they're, they've been taken out. And so I guess my concern was that are those criteria robust enough and workable enough so that, you know, they really can go through them and at the end of it say, yes, this use, we, you could get a conditional use permit for thus and so, but you won't be able to get one for thus and so. And, you know, do that in a very, um, you know, with, with some objectivity so that there doesn't th seem the appearance of subjectivity. Uh, Colin McCase with the state's attorney's office. Thank you for bringing that up, Commissioner Johnson. I think that's a good point to use to highlight that the goal in simplifying it is to make it black or white. Black or white, excuse me. It's almost like Caesar in the Colosseum, up or down. Is it a use by right? Then you get to do it. If not, then you move on to a CUP under 510, and if it meets the criteria, I think the criteria which Michelle just did before I started, I think it fits state statute and its ordinance and our ordinances to fill all the needs that we have and it's in conformance with those. So I think it should allow everyone to understand what they can do with their property and what they can't do with their property. 
And then that criteria, which is in 510, will tell them or should be able to guide them on how to get a conditional use plus. They always have the option to come in and talk with Brittany and Jason and all of the wonderful people at the planning department. Hmm. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Ron. You know, one thing about a, a conditional use permit is that they get the commission, you know, let's just say it's going to be a $3 million uh, development. And and there's 23 conditions, you know, and the, and the conditional use permit is allowed, let's just say an event center. And then 15 years from now, you get new commissioners, you got new planning and zoning, and somebody interprets something a little bit different. And all of a sudden, you know, when they do the review, there's that possibility that they could take that away. And that's the scary thing about the changes in, in commissions and administrations and how uh, people perceive what would be allowed and what's not allowed. So I just want to make sure that we try to protect the general public because they're a little bit dangerous because, because they're based on a review. And we never know who's going to do the review and when they're going to do the review. Uh, it could be 20 years from now. Thank you, Commissioner Raskinek. That's why we built in, and it's the general presumption that the words mean what they say we, they mean. So in our definitions, which are in 103, that you guys are going to take up, I think, next. Plus, when you use a word, say, uh, under the first section, if we scroll up. Oops. Sorry, I'm inarticulate today. I had all my coffee really early, so I apologize. <laughs> but if you look here under section 200, it has revised 2021, because theoretically that's when we're going to have these passed. So the words mean what they mean here and now. Their meaning is fixed. So any word that's not defined has a fixed meaning now. So someone in 15 or 20 years could go back and look at Merriam-Webster, their dictionary from 2020, and they'd know what we're talking about if the word's not defined. If it is defined, then they're stuck with that definition. So the idea is to take out the subjectivity and then just apply the law. It's much like what we've seen at the federal level with the federal judiciary. We don't want them legislating from the bench. We just want them to apply the law. But if you sit there and ask each one of us individually what permanently affixed means, we <laughs> might come up with a different answer. Same word, same definition, 20 years, you're gonna get five different answers what permanently affixed is. That's right. And that's certainly possible. And there's no way to write in a document to eliminate all ambiguity. You can do your best to eliminate it as much as possible. And I think that the document that you have now is as much as possible eliminated that ambiguity. Um, and I know that you referenced earlier that you went and you looked at other counties' ordinances. I might be biased because I've had the opportunity to work with Brittany on this, but these ordinances, the ones that are up before you now, are more clear, direct, and easy to use than any of the other 60 plus in the entire state. They tell you exactly what you need to do, where you need to do, what's up, what's down. Admittedly, I'm biased, so take that for what it is. Um, but I think they should be really easy. So somebody like my dad, who lives out in the country and has a little tiny home, who can look at them and see what he can do with his property and what he can't do. I'm just trying to play the devil's advocate, that's all. I, I know it's a very tough job, but uh, I really would like some stronger definition and permanently affixed. They still, as an appraiser for 35 years, uh, I can tell you what I think it is, but you know, I don't know what a, somebody else thinks it is. I think it's four feet of concrete myself, but. <laughs> Mr. Chair? Go ahead. Are we going in order? In other words, it's. Well, we trash. started, got, we got off a little track here with, with Kathy. I guess so. Uh, but we'll go back to Kathy now and see if she's got other comments. Thank you. No, I don't, but I would like just a little response um, to this discussion. I seem to remember that when we were 
we approved the conditional use uh, new ordinance prior, right? Mm -hmm. I, yes. And my recollection is that we had some dialogue about being, being, being very clear that the reviews that come in the future are only reviews to compare uh, the situation and activities against the conditions that were imposed. The, the review can't be broader than that. And that solves some of the problem about that uh, the, to provide some sense of certainty, increase the sense of certainty for those people that are investing uh, on the basis of conditional use permit. That seems like that's my recollection on that. I have to agree with that one. Yes, we typically look at the um, conditions that are existing at the time, unless there's a situation where it would in injure the public health, safety, general welfare, mm -hmm. um, or mm -hmm. or that they expand or do something different um, than what was originally approved, then those conditions could right. change. Yeah. Okay. I have nothing more. Travis? I don't have anything to add on, on this particular one. Jim? I think it's rather refreshing that it gives us a little latitude. <laughs> and so I'm, I'm very comfortable with the, lay, the way it's laid out. Okay, Ron. <clears throat> no problem. I got my questions answered, and <laughs> I appreciate your time. And like I said, this is uh, one of those where it's not necessarily white and it's not necessarily black, and this is where common sense comes in and a strong commission comes in. So thank you. Charlie? Thank you. Got to me quick then. <laughs> uh, I, I, I told you I'd try to make this meeting. Just for the quick. record, if I remember right, about eight years ago was the first time that a conditional use permit was ever looked at <clears throat> it being struck. Uh, that was done at, by a previous commissioner, previous uh, set of commissioners, and that wasn't done at that time either. It was finally done at the, the basis of the... Uh, the person that had the conditional use permit. But if I remember right, there's never been one done like you're talking about overwording or changing of direction uh, in the middle of the, the ocean, so to speak. Anyway, my, uh, if you look at page, let me put my glasses back on there. We'll for sure get it wrong. Five of 28. I'm looking under <clears throat> L, the central water system in it, and it reads on uh, 2A. A lot surface area must be 20,000 square feet to have an on-site wastewater system. And that's no big deal. So, But if you move down to then M2, then you talk about a minimum surface with a private well. And then it's, it states in there that uh, a lot surface must be 43,560 square feet to have an on-site wastewater system. If the potable water is supplied by a private water system, that's located on the lot. I assume then you must be wanting to do away with well lots or something like that because that's quite a jump. In other words, if you step, if you developed and you put a well lot in there, you could avoid the, you could still get your on-site wastewater system for 20,000 feet, couldn't you? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. It, it just so long as... If you have a well and... Uh... On site wastewater, you have to have a minimum one acre. So if the well is on your lot, then your lot has to be the one acre. Um, but if that well is serving other lots in the area, then they would only have to be 20,000. Yeah, like a PRD would have to have one lot, then 43,700 feet if the well was on that lot mm -hmm. and they did do a well lot. And I pulled, pulled my pen out, so then I. Which is a result of state law and water systems, correct? Correct. This is all basically, that's why we took it out of all of that, because it was repeated over and over and over in each zoning district. And we tried to get rid of that, too, and get some of the more general things into the general district provision so it isn't under each individual zoning district says the same thing. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. I guess one last thing. I think we can all agree that ordinances get outdated. Can we all agree that state statutes get outdated as well? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can, because I'm sure Ross can act. <laughs> Go ahead, Charlie. Okay. The, um, and, and you do this several places, so it's no big. It puts prohibitive uses, and, and we're talking, if uses fit more appropriately in light industrial, heavy industrial, or highway service, then it is prohibited in the commercial district. And then later on, um, if uses fit, and there's several more in here, if uses fit more appropriately in a commercial or highway, then it's prohibited in heavy 
industrial. I assume that then the department or you as the director make some of these decisions that fit into that category that aren't necessarily, uh, what would you call it, uh, hard copy. I think those were intended if it's a use by right in a, a let's say, a heavy industrial district, mm -hmm. then it should be in commercial. That, I, I'm just off the cuff here, but that's what it's saying. It's, it has to do with the use by rights, not conditional uses. It's just the use by right. So if it's a retail establishment and you have heavy industrial, um, you know, that it's more appropriate in commercial. Oh, I read it as wiggle room. Hmm? I read it as wiggle room. Oh. See, and if I was a developer, I'm sorry to say that's the way I would have read it. Because then I'm going to try to come with a sales approach to, I'm thinking of things that, that came up in the past, helicopters, uh, different things that, that on a particular piece of property. Uh, there was another one that was very controversial and then didn't fit. Um, and it had to do with, uh, well, I don't know if you read the car wrecking and the junk ones in here. You've done pretty good on definitions on those. I'm, I'm thinking the, over on the other side. But you got to really read close so that you know what ground you're on. And that's where I thought this was a little wiggle room. Sorry. Commissioner Johnson, if I may, the way that I read the prohibited uses, it's conditional. So if it fits, for example, the one that's up on the screen, if it fits more appropriately in commercial or highway service, then you can't do it in heavy industrial. You would need to rezone. Right. So it should prompt the applicant or the property owner to come into the planning department, assess their options, and then if they need to rezone and they want to do that, then apply for a rezone. But I think we've got vacation home rental in all the list. And to me, those don't fit in a heavy industrial or something. No, they're prohibited in light and in I know, uh, but that's I'm saying that's where I'm going. My thinking goes the other way. When I see a vacation home rental, what are we doing in, in, in light industrial and heavy industrial? They shouldn't be there. They're prohibited in Section 319. Just was the way I was looking. Further questions? No. Thank you. And then there was one. <laughs> so, uh, minor things here that I'll try to go through. Page two of the section. Are all of these um, abbreviations match everything in the uh, um, uh, comp, comp plan? Yes. Okay. Uh, I know that we had big talks in the past about uh, planned unit developments and not necessarily moving forward with those in the future, and we would have the ones that were grandfathered in, but try to make everything into a conditional use or a use by right. Is that still going to be the focus, or are planned unit developments still going to, to be there as an option moving forward as opposed to just grandfathered? Um, they will be as an option, but it's going to be as an overlay. So in an instance where you'd need multiple conditional use permits, um, like if it's a recreational resort, it'll still play, but the underlying zoning district still needs to fit for the overlay. So if you're in a district that allows that already, where you might have multiple ones, um, let's say that you want to do a development uh, like the one that we saw in Rockerville, instead of having a conditional use permit for each individual fourplex, you would do a PUD overlay that would allow fourplexes on that one piece of property. Um, so that's kind of the intent of that. So otherwise, you don't. Otherwise, you would have to have a CUP for each individual structure um, or each individual use. So when you look at conditional uses, especially in things in like highway service, like event centers, you could have event centers with cabins with multiple uses and multiple requirements for CUPs, which that might not necessarily be the best thing. Is to have multiple CUPs, a PUD overlay may be a better fit for those. Okay, Just food for thought. You know for this commission and for other uh, planning commissions, just a, a little block diagram, say under this hypothetical condition, event center, and there's gonna be five, you could do the five conditional use permits or go down and do one, just something that we could visually look at. 
for, you know, like a tutorial. Sometimes it's just easier for us to look at something and say, oh, I, now I see it. Like a cheat sheet, so to speak? Like a... Kind of like your... Flow you know, chart. Your, flow chart. Your office, how you got, you know, the different mm -hmm. blocks. And, and that, to me, it just makes it so clear. And it's a visual aid of some type. For, the, for us that don't know everything about zoning and zoning ordinances and CUPs and land use development. And, because I don't know, it just helps me a lot when I can sit there and visualize, you know, this would be some of the, this would be a situation where you might want to just do the PUD because you don't want to do five conditional use, some kind of a mock example. Okay. And, food for thought. and I think that that's what um, Colin and I had talked about, like with our, different uh, staff reports having just kind of a general front page, you know, that we had talked about, you know, things that say, you know, this is how it meets it, this is why it's a conditional use, just some basic overview, and then getting into the staff report. So um, that kind of stuff is up front for you when you guys do your reviews. Okay. Um, the next items I had were the use of foot and feet, and I'm glad Charlie read it the way that he did in section L and M, where, um, so that these are just grammatical things that I read okay. and I thought, that oh, doesn't sound right, but maybe it is right, and it's just not right in my head. Oh, square feet big, instead of square foot? Yes. Um, that would be, those are some things that I saw, and then, um, my, so then we added the telecommunication facility to the items that Kathy pointed out earlier. And then my la that was all I had on this section. But my question is, is are, are we then asking for this to be approved today and then does it go to council? Or do we do you need to make these changes, bring these back? What is, this, what is the process? You can make a, the motion to recommend it with the proposed changes and then it'll go to the Board of Commissioners for two hearings. They have a first reading and then a second reading. Does anybody have concerns with uh, making that motion based on the conversation today, allowing staff to run with our comments and bring it to the board? I'll make that motion. I'd second it. Okay, motion and second further discussion. Discussion for this item, item number 11. Item number 11, correct. Okay. I do have one change just to clarify to make sure that it gets in the motion is that under allowed uses under the agriculture district that sawmill is actually added. Is it on the document? Is it in the documents in here? It's not in the, it's not on the list of allowed uses and it should be. Under agriculture, did you say? Yes. So it should be added as item 19. It is in here. It is item 19. Mm -hmm. It don't is in copy there. copy that Jerry sent out. That's what it does I have did. item 19? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a copy. I, Colin and I had didn't have it, so we oh, just want to okay. make sure that it was yeah. in there. Okay. okay. And then before the commission votes, I just want to point out uh, to help people interpret it we have the revised the last revised much like the legislature does if you go to the legislature's website it has when the ordinance was enacted when it was last amended so then it helps people understand the text better and when to to nerd out to look at a different dictionary um but that'll be put in uh working with jerry to go back and find when they were first adopted just like Ron, Commissioner Ross Connect asked, excuse me. And uh, hopefully we'll have those all put in so everyone can go back and look at kind of the history and the chronology. I think that's a good idea. Thank you. Further uh, discussion on the motion? Anyone in the audience wish to speak on this item? Seeing none and hearing none, uh, motion is for approval of ordinance amendment OA 20-07 with the stated comments of the commission this, today. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. Brings us to- Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. Just a quick question. I, I know there's a lady here to speak on item 13 and since it took us a while on this one, 
and Colin help me out if it's possible. Maybe we can, if there's a motion I can make that we can move item 13 You can waive ahead. the rules. You can ask to waive the rules. There we go. That's what I'm that's looking what for. That's what I was going to do. She oh, be allowed to speak. Okay. That's what I, I was hoping that we waive the rules and allow Fair number 13 enough. to go ahead of number 12. Okay. Good. You second that? I second that. Motion and second further discussion on the item. Did Charlie, did you? Okay. This has been the rules. Hearing none, seeing none. Anybody have any concerns with taking item 13 next and then coming back to item 12? Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. We're on to item 13, then we'll go back to item 12. Item 13. All right, item 13 is Ordinance Amendment OA 20-09 to amend section 300, supplementary regulations to amend and supersede the existing section 300, supplementary regulations, and to include and reserve section 321 for hard rock mining, and to amend section 204G, special animal keeping regulations, and add it as section 322 to amend and supersede the existing section 204G, special animal keeping regulations. Um, so this goes back, um, there was a committee that met for, and, I, and I'm sorry that I wasn't a party to that, but there was a planning commissioner and an audience member that was, that uh, went over this and had multiple, multiple meetings regarding it. And the committee did make a recommendation in September of 2018 um, on the regulations. Um, but staff reviewed this and then took what um, the committee worked on and what the legal at the time, the state, state's attorney's representative, and what we put forward to you in our proposed section 322 is from the state's attorney's office um, taking in from what was done through the committee. So I know that um, Commissioner Lassiter um, has some more background on this particular ordinance. So. Thank you. And Mr. Chairman, just to point out, Jim and I both served on that committee as well. He was actually a citizen at the time on it. So, yeah, Jim and I probably can answer a lot of questions if we remember. <laughs> but <laughs> Okay. So similar to um, Ordinance Amendment 20-07, uh, does anybody have any specific uh, comments? Mr. Chairman? Go ahead, Kathy. I, I just have one. But that is the requirement, and this is in all the different animals, the fowl and the small livestock and so on, but uh, where it says um, requirements for structure be located in the rear yard. And I just, the reason I, but the reason I point this out is because I have a neighbor who's just down the road a little bit, and he has chickens. And his lot, it's, I, th I think it's like an acre and a half, but... His lot is such that his rear yard is really this rock uh, escarpment, really, rock cliff. And so he's not, his, and his house is pushed clear back to that rock, rocky ledge. So his yard really is on the side. And that's where his garden is, and that's where his chickens are, and it works just fine. And, you know, there's been no complaints as far as I know. But he, he won't be able to meet this rear yard because the rear yard would be way up on that rock ledge. And so, I mean, just, I, I, I'm just wondering how, now his situation might be grandfathered in, uh, but how would a new person that had a similar kind of configuration, and out in the Black Hills, you know, we have all kinds of relief issues, um, how would they manage that if, if, it's, if it has to be in the rear yard? They would have to get a variance. They would have to get a variance. Yes. And that's something that is a doable Commissioner Johnson, yes, uh, getting a variance has specific criteria. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Roskinex is pretty familiar with that. We're going over it right now. One of the requirements for a variance is that there's some physical condition on the property that inhibits compliance with the ordinance. So, for example, your neighbor, who I believe would be grandfathered in, if your neighbor didn't have a chicken coop and wanted to get one, your neighbor could seek a variance and that would be a physical, potentially a physical impediment to getting it. Your neighbor would still need to meet the other five, seven questions or whatever mm -hmm. it is, but yes. Nice, okay, very good. Thank you. Further questions? I do. 
Go ahead, Charlie. <laughs> All right, under this would be your page three, be page four of six, uh, up in jurisdiction. This section applies only to ranchette and reg residential districts. Are you saying both of the districts because you have an S? All of the residential districts. Oh, any of them that include that? Mm -hmm. Because I'm trying to compare it to her letter too. That's what I'm I'm saying. Right. So the ra so have you these, looked at that the 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 letter that came in? Yes, the letters that came in were based on some of the old zoning districts, though. Right. So these are the newer zoning districts, and just so you know, like under the agriculture, this animal keeping is a use by right, so it, it's not applicable to any of those. It would only be the rural residential, the ranchette, um, the low density residential, and if you had larger lot suburban residential districts. It would be applicable to. So under the new one, since I'm an old guy, <laughs> name me the ones that it affects. It would be ranchette, rural residential, the new low density residential that has the, the half acre, um, suburban residential and urban residential. So those are all of the residential. Right by me, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Getting back to Kathy's <clears throat> question, why, why couldn't it be built? Uh, why can't the enclosure be built and located <clears throat> in the rear yard or side yard? Why couldn't we make that change? Would that would that alleviate that, or does that cause further problems? Section G two, little b, first I. I guess that's a question for the board. Uh, most of our uh, accessory structures do have to be in the rear yard, okay. or they have to be in line with. Um, we do have actually. It's another district provision in 309 um, that accessory structures um, aren't allowed in the front yard unless you have a minimum one acre. So then it could potentially conflict with that. Okay. Um, Mr. Throw, Chairman. Throwing out ideas. Go ahead, Travis. No, no, that's fine. We've done a few variances in the near recent. Like there was a garage, I think, we had to do. We had to push it to the front of the property because where they were at, it was supposed to be to the side, but they couldn't meet those requirements and they came in for a variance. So those, we, yeah, I think we will look at those uh, and then apply the variance appropriately. Okay. Further questions on this before we go to the speaker request? Couple. Go ahead, Charlie. Um, number five, fowl means chickens to yeast it. What about pigeons? We're getting more and more people from Florida <laughs> and California and I mean, it's just what if because there's people that actually raise pigeons and as pets as well as train them and race them and Commissioner Johnson yes the way that it's written fowl means chickens geese ducks turkeys peafowl and like birds so they don't cook them for Thanksgiving one of the rules of <laughs> statutory a, construction is you have to read the last provision yeah. like so it has to be like a peafowl a turkey a duck a geese it wouldn't be a pigeon if Pigeons aren't generally eaten on Thanksgiving or whenever you eat these birds. Okay. But that's just a basic rule of statutory construction that gets applied any time that we have something I understand like what you're saying, but in other words, they house them and they do many of the same things that are in part of this ordinance. Pigeons, period. And I don't care, but the, and <coughs> most of them don't have anything to do with cooking them. They, they train them and they raise them and they're buddies. I tell you, in my opinion, the way I read this yeah. is that pigeons wouldn't be allowed. Pigeons wouldn't be allowed. All right. You said they would not? Would not, not. be allowed. Because Pretty they're clear. not like the other birds. All right. I'll just go on. I'll keep picking on you, Brittany. And then if we go to page three, waste removal. The removal and disposal of waste from the fowl, small livestock, and large livestock kept on the property must be done, number one, properly. That's a little vague, I thought. It, then the quarter, other, uh, oh, the size requirement things when you start going up. And then if you take into condition that none of the immature birds count, we could have a lot of feathered people out there if you read under there the count. I'm just pointing out the way we said that we didn't want to include imma the immature birds. Commissioner Johnson, before you go on, I'd like to address both of your concerns. Here, go First, ahead. with properly. Uh, that really modifies in accordance with all local, state, and federal regulations. So 
it'd be impossible com to comply with subsection one properly if they didn't do it in accordance with state, federal, and local regulations to input all of the regulations into this ordinance would make this ordinance unruly. If you've ever dealt with anything with the feds, uh, they have CFR. I don't know if anybody's had the pleasure of looking at a CFR, but it is very, very large. It's unruly. The sections don't make any sense. So I think putting the properly, it modifies the second one in accordance with state, local, and federal regulations. As far as the foul, if you look at the count, it's got the criteria. I believe in the general provisions where it talks about uh, how animals that are under six months of age or something like that do not count towards the count. But if you look under each, underneath, underneath each one, I apologize, I really need some more caffeine. <laughs> um, maturity presumed in subsection C, because trying to enforce this ordinance would be pretty much impossible as far as limitations go to determine. I, I can't tell you how you determine a six month chicken from a five month chicken from a second month or not. That's why we put in this provision that maturity is presumed and that's in each one. So it's for small livestock and large livestock. So they're presumed, it's a rebuttable presumption that they are over six months of age and it'd be pretty easy to prove otherwise. And again, this is just to make the enforcement of the ordinance easier because we only have one enfor enforcement officer uh, and he's pretty busy right now. Uh, if he were having to go track down data births for ducks, it'd be pretty ridiculous pretty quickly. Mr. Chairman, go can, ahead. Can, I, can I speak to that one just a little bit, if you don't mind, <laughs> only because it came up in the committee. That's the reason why I want to kind of point it out. I'd like to hear more. There, there are individuals that uh, raise chickens, butcher them, and, and continue to raise chickens for themselves. And they don't raise a whole bunch of them, but they may raise several of them throughout the year. So there's some chickens out there that can uh, grow to maturity uh, within eight weeks. And so you bring in uh, a flock of chickens, if you will, you're grazing out, you're growing up for eight weeks, getting ready to butcher them. And then you've got chicks that come in because you've ordered more chickens through the mail. And so you may have little ones as you're waiting for these guys to get to eight weeks, which is less than that maturity age as well. So you can get them to the age of what you would call maturity for butchering, butcher them, at, but you've got another cycle of chickens that are going to be ready in another two or three weeks. Did you just say you order them through the mail? Yes, you can get chickens through the mail. Yeah. They get delivered to you. You didn't know that? I learned something new every day, Travis. Thank you. <laughs> yes, you can get them. And you can get all kinds of fowl through the mail, actually. And I, I agree. And not to pick on you, but I, I did say it was easy either yeah. to try to do this stuff, be it a commissioner, and try to go through and plan ahead. So I understand what you're saying about wording. But when we're talking, let's take the word properly. I think that's a little light duty. I think we could have done something like normally accepted industry practices because we have people buried, digging holes and burying garbage out there now because we don't and have for years. But at least in our ordinance, we're trying to get them to do the normal accepted industry. Well, industry wouldn't allow these people to be burying their garbage in holes because they think they got enough property to do that. Follow me? Mm -hmm. So that's all I'm coming from. I know where you're coming from, and I agree with you. There's, And which one do you pick besides? You didn't even mention that. Which Whose do you pick to go by? But I, I do think you've got to give them some direction and something to sit on. Sure, we're not going to send them to jail for it. But if they're out there and they're not taking care of it, again, digging the hole on your property and taking care of it, that's not the right way to do it. So that's all I was pointing out. And then other things like you've got them keeping them in and no rooster. You're talking about we've got a got an ordinance officer that's busy and we're going to worry about whether somebody's got a rooster. Well, you know. The neighbors usually let us know. Yeah. Usually <laughs> <Okay. laughs> the neighbors. <laughs> all right. Hmm. Anyway, and then we, we increased the amount of uh, the other thing I had, and I marked them on all three, I think it was that we keep increasing the distance from the property line as it, the, the different things go up. 
as the different amount of area goes up. I, I found that cute. Where at, Charlie? Well, if you take it, the last, uh, I think it's based on, uh, I got to go to the page before, for livestock. You know, the livestock are in here too, but we keep getting them farther away from property line. Housing, uh, where livestock may grow, and this one's under li large livestock. We keep getting them farther away the from the stairs. edge of the property of the gangway or something. No. From fowl to small yeah, livestock. We have to small large, livestock or, to or 20 livestock. feet from the dwelling and the property line. Then we got 50 and whatever. 10, 10, 20, Just a, a point again. Of how far are we going and what's proper and what's not. Thank you for your time. Further questions on this item? On this item? We'll go to the speaker request form. Uh, Tina Mullally. Representative Tina Mullally from District 35. Uh, thank you so much for moving that forward because I have a meeting with the sheriff at five. <laughs> so, um, Brittany uh, answered one of my questions uh, with the new ordinance as far as the new comprehensive plan and your zoning districts because Ranchette was never considered in our uh, committee. Uh, just to, as a background, I was vice chair of the Special Animal Keeping Committee. Thank yes, thank you. And um, Ranchette was not prop, uh, a parcel that we even considered. So um, I s asked to have uh, letters because I wasn't real sure if they'd been put in the file uh, that was brought forth uh, at the very last meeting of ours. But in reading through, the reason I asked you to hand those out is because I hadn't read the new ordinance yet from the uh, staff recommendations and the staff's draft. So having my question answered as to what urban or residential was met, I appreciate that, Brittany, for answering that question. I did have uh, a couple other questions. Um, Commissioner Catherine Johnson brought forth as far as the backyard that was um, also answered with the variance. So I thank you for that. Um, Commissioner Charlie Johnson brought up a, a point that I wanted to bring forth and state's attorney or the attorney could not answer that question. In the maturity of fowl, there is a very easy way to tell the maturity of fowl, and that's the difference between down and pin feathers. Yeah. A mature bird has pin feathers. Anything other than pin feathers, if it's down, it is considered an immature animal. Okay? So any um, ordinance officer can decide if it is mature or not by that definition alone. So in that, um, I want to take my hat off to uh, the staff for coming up with an ordinance that reflects the intent of the committee that was formed and spent many, many hours working on. So I do want to thank you, and I will have no objections to the ordinance as it sits with those questions being answered for me. So thank you very kindly. Thank you. Question for you. What's the difference between a pin feather and down feather? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever had a feather pillow, Commissioner? Um, yes, I would say that I have. But... Have you ever had something put you in the yep. face? Yep. That is a pin feather. Got it. Anything that is soft, where the um, follicle of the feather is soft and pliable and bendable, that's considered down. Thank you. Should we put that in our definitions? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sir, please don't. To keep the world I square here. FYI. Thank you for your time, and thank you so much for your Prepare service. I think I wanted to know. <laughs> Sometimes you learn things here. I guess. 
uh, with that, staff is recommending approval of ordinance amendment 20-09 in accordance with the staff's proposed text. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion on the motion? Hearing none, seeing none. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Motion carries. We are back to item 12. Okay. Item 12 is Ordinance Amendment OA 20-08 to amend Section 100, Statutory Authorization and Jurisdiction, to amend and supersede the existing Section 100, Statutory Authorization and Jurisdiction. Um, this essentially is the statutory author and um, definition section. Um, there was quite a few definitions that were added, and mainly because they were um, used by rights, so we actually defined them. Most of these definitions, if not all of these definitions, come from the American Planning Association's dictionary. Um, the APA has put together a very comprehensive um, planner's dictionary um, that we use for reference quite often. Um, and we did take most of the definitions that we did update from the APA dictionary, uh, obviously from jurisdictions that are more applicable or comparable to um, our area. Um, we didn't take necessarily definitions that were maybe from like a city like Chicago, sure. but maybe more of a county, you know, more of a rural county. Um, East of the Mississippi. Brittany, can I ask you a question? Sure. You willing to get this extended till next meeting? Because I have a lot of questions on your oh. definitions. <laughs> and what I'm saying, I'll stay. I have no problems with that. But I don't want to be redundant. And I'll give you a few examples about sub on your page three. Sub rent the room for a period of time in an adult motel. I have for a little problem with sub renting. I know, but these are the existing definitions that were, you know, so we didn't change any of the existing ones, but I know, we can. But I'm saying, and then we go over a basement, a story partially underground and having at least half of its height above the average level of the joining ground. There isn't, a there isn't three quarters of uh, one out of ten of the basements around here have half their height above the ground. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I want to have to leave. I can't see the drive if it gets dark. And okay. I've got 20 minutes to get home. Mm -hmm. And if this is going to take as long as. Go back to my original question. If okay. I was to, to, to ask that you, ex, you know, put this on the next. Well, I'm not going to be here in, in the next meeting. Jesus. <laughs> That's the only one I'm going to miss all year. <laughs> Yeah, Merry Christmas, Charlie. <laughs> Thanks, Andy. Thank you. What about 30 days? <laughs> I'd probably make a motion to continue. There's a lot of stuff that I wouldn't mind sitting down, like boat. <clears throat> you don't license the boat unless it's uh, 16 or 15 feet. So uh, there's just some stuff that, uh, that we're going to make this permanent, I think. I'd like to take a little more time and, and uh, everybody go over this and, and then highlight the questions and then work on them one-on-one. -on -one. So just from staff's perspective, this is a very important piece of our whole ordinance. So what things are defined as, we use a lot in making determinations. So if there's extra time that's needed, I think it would be warranted or justified. Okay. Further questions? Or was that a motion? I'd move <laughs> <laughs> that we extended for two meetings, but now somebody got to do a second. <laughs> I'll second <laughs> that. For two meetings. So two meetings from now, not the next meeting, the me I, meeting I'm after that. that. And that meeting is on what date? I think it's the 25th, but let me double check. It is the 25th of January. Okay. Mr. Chair, I'm not going to be, that won't be my month, but uh, I could still participate as a commissioner, can I? You can submit. I mean, just in the audience. Yeah, you could do that. You could submit comments. You could so do that. So that I can kind of yep. pass stuff on to the other commissioners that. Uh, not not a problem. Okay. Is there a second? That was my second. Okay. Motion and second. Further uh, discussion on the motion. I would just like to ask a question of the commission. What is it that you would want to address? Because if we're going to have the interim month, that's dead time that we're losing to get stuff done. 
and we're going through a comprehensive overhaul of all of the ordinances and we're trying to update them all. And like Brittany said, this is an important central piece because it defines what rights people have in 200. It would be helpful to know what areas you think are lacking or need addressed. Colin, I'll answer. I'm, I'm prepared to go through every page <laughs> one by one. And I do have some comments on some different ones. And I agree with you, Brittany, it's extremely important. But if, if you want what you're wanting, I don't have any problems turning it in ahead of time. You can have, you know, next week to start reviewing it. But I don't suggest on top of just what I went through to get on the payroll that you're turning me into a clerical person. I'm not going to sit here <laughs> and go through my computer and then figure out how to send it to you. So I don't know how to do that anyway. Commissioner Probably. Johnson, that's not what I'm meant to say, and I'm sorry you took it that way. What I want to know is if there are specific issues that you have with the definitions to best use our time, energy, and resources, because this sucks up a lot of time, energy, and resources. If there are specific definitions that you want to address, I noticed that you said basement. The, I can tell you the reason that was addressed was because people fight us with what a basement means. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason we addressed it that one. But, if but the simple fact is they're not has, half above ground, so that immediately makes it wrong. Right, and this but they can be half above ground. Right, well, this definition wasn't changed, so I can go through and just tell you the ones that we actually added or changed, just so you know, and then the ones that were existing, just so you have a, you know, because those, like, basement was has been in our ordinance. Why wouldn't you change that? That's wrong. It's incorrect. <laughs> well... Well, we looked at all we looked at in this instance was adding the new ones based uh, upon our stuff. That's what we had done. So I, I, so I went into this wrong thinking that I'm reviewing definitions of what's in the book. You only are. you wanted me to review the definitions you guys wanted to change in the book. Am I correct? Well, we changed some of them that we actually had issues with, too. Yes. Ones that people challenged us on or that weren't clear. Easy so I know. <laughs> but I'm just saying that's what we, we had done. Um, but if there's certainly if there's ones that you feel that are not appropriate, then now's the time to change. Them. Maybe I'm out of line here, but I do have a lot of questions on a lot of definitions through the pages. And they can't be just generally or shotgun to your direction, Colin. I just can't do it. And but I could saying, individually do it. I've written them all out. I, I appreciate what you're saying, and I agree that I think our definitions need an overhaul. There's no question about that. But to get it up to speed with the 200s to make sure everything moves forward and then coming back and addressing it, I think would be the best way to address it unless there were specific concerns that this commission has. I understand that there's been a motion and a second and the commission will vote however they want, but to help implement what's happening with the 200s, the special animal keeping provisions, this one, and then the ones that are coming after this. I think having the definitions in place, especially the updated ones, is very important. To your point about going and addressing the other definitions, I agree wholeheartedly. I love language. These are butchered. We need to do something about these. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about that. And I think that you're right that staff as a group was more aimed at addressing the ones to make it come into view with the comp plan and the 200s. And I apologize that it wasn't a more all-encompassing one. Uh, but really, that's all the that time allowed. Mr. Chairman, go ahead. Um, can I maybe offer up a suggestion in that maybe we get the number of all the new ones so we can just quickly look over the new ones and see how those fit, knowing that the previous um, definitions that we have have been there and we haven't brought it up to an attention that we've had an issue with them in the past and address those at a later time because we're just going to carry over what we currently have in definition to move it forward. But if we have specific challenges or concerns, we should then address those like we would any other ordinance, go back and say, hey, can we put this on the agenda and, and deal with that particular issue? If that wouldn't... I don't have any problem with that. So that's... 
I mean, at least I, the least we can figure Order out what the new pizza, ones. Order right? <laughs> well, that's up to I just wanted the to chairman. Laugh, yeah, that's up to the chairman. I think the chairman should buy it if we do that. <laughs> no, I'm game for pizza. sitting here and knocking through all of these because if we put it off, it's just more we got to do later. So um, I, I'm game for going through the ones that were added or changed maybe, and maybe we go through all of those oh, now. And, and That's what uh, I was wanting to know. What's, if, yep. if I can get a number, just tell me the numbers. I'll write them down so I can mark them and then just. Right. Sure. It, and you, the commission can follow along. I'll scroll uh, on the screen. So it's number 10, animal husbandry, which is on page five of 36. What were you and if anybody needs a pen or anything, just let me know, and we can go oh, snag yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Boy, I have a question yeah. mark by that one, yeah. So do we want to take them right now as we go and get yeah, this done? Yeah, let's do it, just one at a time. Okay, where are you at now? Five of 36. Number 10, 10, animal husbandry. So I, just a point of order, we've got a motion. This is the discussion this is phase the discussion. of that. So we don't have we don't have to have a motion for what's already on the agenda, do we? We have a motion, no, but there to is a motion to postpone this for two meetings. Oh, and let's been do that seconded. after we do. Yeah, because this. this is technically the discussion. I'll, I'll withdraw I just want to make motion. sure we're still in line. I'll withdraw it if the second's happy about. It. I'll withdraw. Okay. 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 We can go to work. I just don't want us to get lost all of a sudden. We're like, wait, what did we vote? Thanks, Drew. Yep. Thank you for the reminder. Item ten. Go ahead, Charlie. Oh, I just had a big question mark on it. I'm, I'm not sure exactly. The term does not include a confined animal feeding operation. After we put all that into there, after we talk about the others, is from winter months, is from grazing and pasture where they are kept, and you know, I'm, I'm not sure really what it meant. Well, animal husbandry is separate from a um, animal feeding operation because animal husbandry is a use by right in agriculture. Uh, animal feeding operation is a conditional use permit in agriculture. And I believe there's specific state statutes and administrative rules that deal with confined animal feeding operations, CAFOs. That's more of a bigger deal East River than it is here West River. But I think it's important to make the distinction that when you have animal husbandry, it doesn't then mean that you get to do confined or concentrated animal feeding. That's why I say we're talking breeding versus just confined animals and, and uh, fattening them up, whatever processes they go through. I, I'm not a farmer by any stretch of it. But we put that under animal husbandry, and that's where I lost continuity with it. In other words, we're saying these other things, the raising of the domestic. I thought, you know, there's one later on that talks about the building that's got husbandry in it. So we're gonna hit that later on here. So, but um, can't we put in something that it doesn't, something in there that it doesn't include animal husbandry. <laughs> in other words, it, it includes these things. We're calling it animal husbandry and what we wrote here doesn't have anything to do with animal husbandry, does it? So what sort of definition is it? This isn't animal husbandry, is it? We're talking about we're talking about non-animal husbandry. No, this is animal husbandry. This is actually a definition out of the AP. Really? Yeah. Yes. I, I, Charlie, Charlie, German, if you don't mind, Go I'm ahead. trying to figure out where you're going with this because this is almost like the standard definition of husbandry. The only difference, and and correct me if I'm wrong, the CFAO is the more what you would know as a feedlot, mm -hmm. um, where they're very confined, very um, there's a lot of regulations with them too because you've got waste and, and water issues and things of that nature. But this is really for your, your normal person who is going to just have, you know, small operation going on. So defining it like that and saying that it's not part of a um, feedlot operation. the husbandry had to do with the breeding side of it. It doesn't? No. Okay. It's just the raising of the animals. Now, you All may right. breed them, but. Sure. Yeah. And under this, it looks like they could then, right? Because it's yeah, you under can still the husbandry. Breed them. Right. Okay. I'll re re forget it. <laughs> okay. Next one's art gallery. Mm -hmm. Any issues with that one? Anyone? Uh, Chairman, I don't have an issue with it, but is there like a, a real need to actually have this defined in there? Is, there, is, there, is it part of something new that we have coming on board? 
with any of our in our commercial district and it hasn't been we um, defined a lot of the ones the use by rights um, that weren't defined like you'll see club hall lodge okay. art gallery all of these things because you know we have a lot of different uses in the area and different ideas just because of our tourism industry so making sure that things are defined what they really are so if we said it was a, a use in a particular area then we're just redefining it here so okay all right next one uh, just a point here second um sentence in that number 12 uh, shouldn't there be a uh, comma after art and before books or did you mean display of art books I thought you meant display of art, book. books, painting, sculpture. No, it oh, should be so, art books. That's correct. Or display of art books. Yeah. Can't, wouldn't people, I'm sorry, but don't, some people consider books <laughs> just separately without art in them. Art? They call them art books. I don't know, they consider pictures art. Your books. Yeah, I don't know. I, so, I, so when I was reading, I thought it was missing a comma. I'll stand corrected again, I guess. I get too picky, huh? <laughs> no. Part of Brittany. No, I, I don't think, I don't think you're being too picky. An establishment engaged in the sale, loan, or display of art, books, paintings, art sculpture, or other works of art. Uh, I think that should be. And a comma. A comma there. So thank you very much, Commissioner Johnson. All right, next item that you guys had highlighted. Bedroom number eighteen. This has come up a few times. Mm -hmm. So this one goes back to how we size our on-site wastewater treatment systems. So. Um, there's been a lot of questions about those. So we, our current definition says any portion of a dwelling which is so designed as to furnish the minimum isolation necessary for as a sleeping area. It may include but is not limited to, you know, a den and an all-purpose room study or exercise room. Um, the trouble that we run into is it'll be a bedroom, it'll look like a bedroom, but in the plans they'll put an exercise room. And we consider that a bedroom. I mean, anytime you have, and that's why we kind of further defined it as 81 square feet of floor area to window to the outside. Are you going to call the shot then when a contractor gives you those prints, you're going to say that now under our definition here, we're going to see, we see your den here as a bedroom. And we do that now. Okay. It's just that this actually further defines, you know, at least 81 square feet and a window to sure. the outside. Um, if it's an interior room in a basement that doesn't have any windows or a very small room, um, we've foregone some of those requirements. So we actually defined it now. That has to be at least nine by nine with a window. Okay. We have boat. Boat. Concerns with that? <clears throat> My, the reason I say boat is because Mr. Allard, Allard had a boat, and there was this, let's get it licensed. Well, maybe we should put, uh, it should be, a, it should be uh, a, a watercraft that has to be licensed by the state of South Dakota or something to that effect, because uh, a kayak could be considered a boat, and I don't know that we want to, where do we, I guess I need to know what the intent of this is, but it uh, seems to me we need a little more definition. If this ever comes up and there's questions, what, what do we want a boat to be and what don't we want a boat to be? Mr. Chairman, what would it be better to define watercraft rather than boat? Because I think I know one particular incident this would apply to, but there could be many others <coughs> depending on how creative someone gets. Thoughts? I have a question. Go ahead, Jim. No, it's fine. I'm just... What are we going over the ones that you've had problems with? And that we've added. You've added. Mm -hmm. So these are all new. Correct. So we have no reason to believe there's anything wrong with these definitions. They've come from some legitimate source. 
Correct. They've come. Okay. Like I said, probably 99% of them came from the But why EPA. are we second guessing somebody who's probably had far more experience than 500 commissions like this in addressing these issues? It seems to me we ought to be looking at definitions which have created some kind of difficulty. And I don't know if we have that information, do we? And maybe we do. And if we do, then it seems like maybe we ought to have it here before we go through every one of these definitions and reinvent the wheel, it, it, it seems, I mean, definitions should only be changed if they create a problem. In other words, they're not consistent with reality or the way things happen. And it seems to me we're going over something like a boat, and you may be damned right about the boat definition, but have we ever had experiences, other than Mr. Allard, who's kind of an outlier anyway, I, so I'm a little concerned about us just plowing through this, every one of these, you know, mundane definitions, boat, board. <laughs> I mean, it seems like a poor use of our time and energy. So I, I guess, and pardon me for speaking out, but this, this, I find it a little frustrating. So. so Commissioner Coleman, if I could answer you, our bigger problem is the fact that it's not defined, not the fact that you know, the definitions. We have some that we have issues with, um, like bedroom, you know, that needed to be clear. Um, but our bigger problem, and I think Colin can attest to this and Jason, is we don't have them defined. So you and don't actually, have these definitions? We didn't currently have Okay, these. that's fine. But, but, but once again, are we going to, are we going to torturously go through each one of these? Commissioner Coleman, I think that's up to you and the other commissioners. Well, no, I'm asking this question of everybody here because I do think that it seems to me that if these, if you, if you drew these from a hat, then I would say we got to go through each one of these. But you didn't. You took them from a manual, a planning manual, or something similar, or illegal legal dictionaries, right? Yes, it's the APA's dictionary. So All right. It's the American Planning Association. It's the basis. I just think it's kind of silly to go through each one of these, but. But maybe it's just because the hour is getting late and <laughs> the patience is getting short. And um, but anyway, so I would I, still I, prefer I to, to do it my views. only because it's composite of work. And I'd like as a commissioner, I feel it's my job to remove review that composite of work. And if I have an individual one, and as I said before, I will get to you guys if I have an individual one that I have some hang up on. But I'll just state my thoughts along the way to try to shorten it up. So I, I somewhat understand. I'd like to go home and watch a football game too, but we'll see. Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Kathy. You know, I agree with Jim on this issue. I think these definitions are established, well established, obviously, and that I, so that's, that's one point. Second point, I think it's also all right if, if the, there's interest uh, and, you know, and motivation to go through all of these, uh, we, then the commissioner should be allowed to do that. But I think we should, that should happen outside of this setting. I mean, I've, I've got till five o'clock and then I've got other commitments. And so, I mean, I can, and I, so I think that to me, I'd like to recommend this path forward. The motion on the, on the table is to defer this for a couple of- Two meetings. Two meetings. I think that would be fine. And in the meantime, maybe we can receive information as to the new definitions that were input into this. And so that there's an opportunity to study those. And then we move on from there. But I, I really, this to me is seeming rather a futile exercise. I have a hunch that we're only to be, we've got a lot more to go. And uh, I'm not sure of the futility of it. Commissioner Johnson. I, Commissioner, I would concur. <laughs> I just want to note that I believe the motion was withdrawn, so there's no current motion. Oh, okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I can make one if time Plus, you needed these to keep up with the other two ordinances we've already voted on, I assume. Yeah, the majority are uses. You know, when you look through, it's like right. temporary use, attached structure, wedding venue. Could you go down quickly with them, and I'll just highlight them and mark them? And mm -hmm. I mean, at least we'd all know then. Right. If some of the other ones maybe we had hang-ups on aren't, are, are part of that new section we were talking about. 
So Central Sewer System, Central Water System, Club. Central Sewer System. Commonwealth. Did you get Club? So number so 29. You, you're going fast. Sorry, I'll just do the number. Just do the number. 29. Okay. okay. 33. 34. And 39. And that's on page 11. There's a big jump. 43, 48, 49, 56, 59, 60, I'm sorry, I didn't that one, 65, 67, 74, 79, 82, 98, 99, 100, and there's another big jump to page 26. There's a jump to page 26. No? Okay. 26. 26. That'll be a jump to page 26. We must have been in the, the number 114. Okay. 114. Yeah. Uh, what was the one before that, Brittany? 100. 100. Okay. And then 114. I can't lift my fingers. 118. 120, 122, 124, 126, 128, and there's a big jump again to page 33. 33? Yep. Oh, no, 34, sorry. So it's 142. 146, 149, and 150. Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Can I make a suggestion that we've highlighted these in our books and they're, these are hard copies, but could could this portion be scanned with the highlighted sections and put in a PDF and, and sent to the uh, commissioner service so that we could look at this uh, uh, yes. on media? Yep, I think we have most of them highlighted yeah. on there. And if it'll help any of the other commissioners, I only had a couple of those that had questions. Okay. So how, how, how many how many as a couple? <laughs> Very much. The, the husband tree one, but Travis straightened me out on husband tree. I, I, I'm sympathetic a, to the staff here, so I'm 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 on board for okay. hammering through I can, your items and I'll getting through them. But I'm also I understand the because I I wouldn't be a, a bit adverse to passing things to keep it up with the other ordinance. I didn't have. Uh, Anything on there, 28 boat buffer club. <clears throat> oh, I had a property line question on a common wall because of the, uh, that you can't cite a property line through it. Uh, just for instance, Rapid City uses a six inch space in their uh, common wall on buildings so that you could shoot a, a level through it. That was the only question I had there, and that was very simple. But if we don't want to, I mean, and the the lone people, lone people get hung up by that sometimes too. Oh, freight, freight, and truck yard terminal. I assume you're talking about actually a train, like that they drop the uh, the. Uh, uh, movable uh, containers. Yes. That's what you're doing. Yes. And th there wasn't any mention of that in there. And that was, I, I thought we needed a little something so that people, when they're looking for that, are going to find what they're looking for. What was the next one? And then, 
Living space, nope. Lodge, nope. Natural areas, nope. We're already up to 100. I think we covered them. We'll look. Oh, we got all those pages. Yeah, we jumped to 30. 26. Husbandry, you, you solved for me, Travis. You got me up to speed. <laughs> because it, I, it all talked about a building, and I'm going, what the hell is that doing in husbandry? But, you know, maybe you're supposed to be inside. Those animals should be screened, huh? <laughs> Bear with me. My fingers aren't as good as separating these pages. Is, and I don't want to tell you that I support something and then renege. Temporary use. No. Nope. Temporary use was one of your last ones, wasn't it? Wedding venue unattached. Yep. Wholesaling. That's it. That's all the ones that I had any question on that you went through. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Ron. Uh, so if we approve this tonight so that you can get moving, there will be other occasions that we will have a chance to go in there and make modifications if we feel they are needed. Two of them at the so county commission. Level. We can keep moving, but we, there will be other opportunities to uh, ask other questions and request modifications if necessary. Commissioner Ross, you're correct. And I just want to point out that ordinances can be revised at any time. So if there's a particular provision that somebody has come up to you, Commissioner Ross Connect, or to Commissioner Johnson and said, hey, I don't know if this is right. Maybe we should look at that. Just bring it to staff and then we can look at it. But I do want to echo Commissioner Johnson that the definitions do need overhauled at some point, but I think it's important to have them pass together because it's almost like tying one hand behind the back. Uh, and it's pretty difficult to move forward. I'll uh, go ahead and make the, move, <coughs> the motion to approve. Second. That's, that's read. Motion and second. Further discussion? Mr. Chair. Go ahead. Just as one clerical addendum, and this is my fault because when I did this, uh, I was in a little bit of a rush. I would like to just put in, instead of, all the definitions being under introduction, I think it should be under B definitions, but that is really just a formatting, not a stylistic, shouldn't change anything. Um, I just overlooked that and I apologize that I didn't bring it up sooner. So the, specifically the change would be what? Just add under 103 subsection B definitions and then all of the definitions would go under subsection b as opposed to subsection a noted anybody have any issue with that as the motion was to approve hearing none seeing none anything else all those in favor signify by saying aye aye, aye. aye. those opposed no motion carries brings us to item 14 the county board report uh, the Board of Commissioners concurred with the Planning Commission's recommendations from the December 7th, 2020 Planning Commission meeting. Seeing no questions. Item 15, there is no one from the public. We'll move to item 16, items from staff. No, we don't have anything at this time. Got a question. I read in the, in the comments um, one of the planners was last day I missed um, was, or is there a job uh, posting out there? Do you, are you guys interviewing people? What's the status? Oh, yes. Um, there is two job postings open right now for uh, assistant environmental planner. Stephanie did leave our office and a building inspector. Okay. Um, and speaking of that too, Jason was actually promoted to the assistant planning director. So I was going to let you know at the next meeting, but. Well, congratulations. For speaking. Congratulations. Good work. <laughs> Yes, and then we do have a small going away gift for um, Commissioner Lassiter. So we just want to say thank you so much for all of your work with our office and serving on this uh, commission for as long as you have and just being uh, a voice of reason and just uh, <laughs> working with our office. So this is for you. Thank you. Yeah, you're not rid of oh. me though. <laughs> Hand it up there. 
Thank you very much, Travis. On behalf of everyone here on the Planning Commission, um, I think you and I started at about the same time, if I'm not mistaken, and it's been uh, uh, a good time. So congratulations on your new new uh, appointment, and, and uh, uh, we wish you the best. Thank you very much. It's Thank been you. a pleasure. Yep. I've learned a lot here, by the way. <laughs> Items from the membership. Item 17. I'll be brief. Uh, can Brittany just keep us in touch when you and Colin get your heads together on looking at the rest of the uh, definitions? And I hope it would be soon. Okay. Yeah. Because we basically <laughs> skipped by that tonight. And I'm saying there, I think you've got a lot of problems in there. But, yes. Or some. That's, that's a nicer word, isn't it? Some problems. Some. And the EPA dictionary is very useful. Um, so it, it's been Well, I'm sure helpful. you can help us. But I'm just saying some of them seem big and out of line to me. The basement. That's a perfect example. So just to speak to that a little bit more, and I think Commissioner Roskinak knows this because we've had meetings between the board and staff we're hoping to update all of our ordinances within the next 18 months. So hopefully at some point in those 18 months, we can circle back and update the definitions to make sure they're all correct, to make sure they mean what they're supposed to mean. Um, but I don't know if that's going to be closer uh, in time to now or closer to the 18th month window because a lot of the ordinances do need updated um, and some more more so than others just bring them in compliance just saying i'm 74 and i look out for the proverbial truck of life so i don't want it to come <laughs> calling before we get to review the definitions thank you Anything else, uh, items from the membership? Just want to point out one other thing, just so Rich is tuned in on this. You can also get bees through the mail, up to 15,000 of them at a time, just so you know. <laughs> Thank you for the education. I'm you can get 15,000 of them at a time? I'm in the mail, open yeah. To that. That would so, be a noisy receiving. Would it? I might chime in before we quit. I told the other commissioners, I said, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what you guys get paid. I heard that... Uh, I can tell you not enough, and I've learned in the last two years, uh, I've learned an awful lot from the Planning Commission, and, and uh, so I appreciate your time and dedication. To make in Pennington County, like Cullen said, one of the best counties in the state of South Dakota. Thank you. Further items from the membership? Hearing none, seeing none, uh, brings us to item 18, adjournment. Is there a motion? I move to adjourn. Second. Motion and second. Further discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Yep, four minutes, Kathy. We're adjourned. Oh. <laughs>